it, uh, it's the uh, it's the witching hour. So um, let me call the meeting to order and read the governor's preamble. Good evening. This is the May uh, 25th, 2021 meeting, open meeting of the Hopkins and Conservation Commission being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth from the outbreak of the COVID-19 to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. We're complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This meeting will feature public comments. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting is also being broadcast live and recorded by HCAM. Supporting materials that have been provided to members of the commission for this meeting are available on the town's website. After commission members and staff have discussed each project application on the agenda, the chair will then open the discussion to public comment. Members of the public who wish to speak are asked to identify their name and address. Three minutes will be afforded for each public comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote of the commission members. At this time, I'd like to confirm the members that are present. Jim Sorello. Here. Ed Harrow. Here. Dean LeBlanc. Here. Uh, Ted Barker Hook. Here. And this is Jeff Barnes speaking. Here. And Melissa and Carrie should be joining us uh, imminently. Um, they're not on the call yet, but we do have a quorum. And confirming staff that are present Don McAdam. Here. Kim Sierra McCauley. Present. Anna Rogers. Present. And Matt Verrill. Present. Okay. And for those of you in the audience who uh, don't know Ms. Sierra McCauley, she is going to be our new conservation administrator. Um, she has officially joined the town and will re be replacing Don uh, here in the next couple of weeks during the transition period. So welcome, uh, Kim. Okay. Moving along on the agenda. So we have a couple documents for review, Don. Lucier for Valentine Circle, a determination of applicability and 192 Hayden Row, with the town of Hockington, an extension permit for the order of conditions. Yeah, I don't know if... Uh... The commission had any issues with them? And if not, you guys want to take a vote for, uh, for us to sign that and get those out? Yep. Were there any questions or comments on those documents, folks? Okay. If I can get a motion that the documents for review be issued in the form currently before the commission and that the uh, documents be authorized and that Anna Rogers be authorized to sign the documents on behalf of the commission members present. So moved. Ted made the motion and a second, please. I'll second. Okay, Jim, and we'll do the roll call vote. Uh, Janine? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ted? Yes. Ed? Yes. And Jeff is, an, is a yes, okay. Okay, so a few uh, new applications received and it looks like these are all uh, Toll Brothers uh, applications for Chamberlain Street. Uh, so we'll be discussing those next week. Which one? Uh, this is lot 4, 7, 11, 
13 and oh, okay. 20, the Toll yep. Brothers. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the draft minutes for March 23rd, 2021, and then the minutes for the executive session of March 23rd, 2021. Did everyone get to review those and were there any comments or questions? No. Okay, if I can get a motion to approve both sets of minutes, the uh, standard meeting minutes and the executive session minutes, please. So moved. Okay, no Ted made the motion, Jim seconded, and Janine? The distribution list together very quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Folks, if you're not speaking, can you please uh, mute your mic? Thank you. Uh, okay, Jim? What's the question? Uh, we made the motion. Are you in favor uh, or opposed? Uh, 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 aye. For, for the minutes. Aye. Okay. Uh, Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. Very good. Um, all right, moving along. Wild 48 Wood Street. This is an exemption request, Don. This was for the removal of uh, four trees, I believe. I think Matt can give us a, an update on his uh, review. Yeah, uh, this is Matt. Ahead, Matt. Um, <clears throat> Pardon the extremely poor sketch that, uh, that Don just brought up. Um, so basically there's four trees out there, three red maples and, that are, you know, 18 inch decent size and one black cherry that's uh, on the smaller side. Uh, the black cherry and two of the maples uh, definitely were leaning towards the house and appeared to have some issues. Uh, one of the red maples, there was a little bit, all of them are sort of right along the edge of the wetland. Um, you can see here kind of the, the, the lot slops, sleep, the slopes down quite steeply uh, to the wetland. That's the black cherry, that last picture. Um, one of the red maples to me didn't necessarily seem to be um, leaning too badly toward the house but they are all large trees, certainly within striking distance of the house, depending on um, which way the wind's blowing, I suppose. Um, so I, th I think they're all, um, or at least the, the maples anyways, are potentially good candidates um, to be sort of topped and leave as much of a, a wildlife snag as possible, at least the two that are the further into the wetland. The one that in this picture is kind of at the top of the slope um, you know, maybe that one's not feasible. I don't know, but um, yeah, this is, you know, seemed fairly straightforward. The other thing that was noted when I was out there, there was a, a good amount of yard waste that was being dumped in the buffer zone and into the wetlands. So um, would recommend the homeowner maybe discontinue that practice. Okay, great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, do we have the homeowner on the call tonight? Not that I'm aware. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't let's see Mr. Wild or Mrs. Wild. Um, okay. So Don, I think um, pursue, you know, pursuant to Max recommend, uh, Matt's recommendation, you know, why don't we kind of just go along with our standard practice of, you know, if, if the commission's in agreement that, you know, we allow the applicant to remove the trees, replace the trees with, um, you know, shrubs or something smaller uh, that's more conducive to being, you know, closer to the house. Uh, that's not as, uh, doesn't pose as much of a, you know, threat to, damaging it, you know, if there's a storm. Um, and then if we can just also ask uh, the applicant, 
um, to discontinue the uh, dumping of the yard uh, debris into the buffer zone, the wetland. Yeah. Does that make you know, sense? Yeah. It, typically, you know, you guys would ask for mitigation for, for live trees, but if the, you know, the, the public safety trees, you know, you would typically just, you know, remove the threat, you know, so we could uh, look for mitigation on the one that we didn't think was, you know, too much of an issue. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Is there everyone in agreement on that? Any? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, sounds good. Town of Hopkinton, uh, 110 to 112 Fruit Street. This is an exemption request. I think Mr. Dockey, Chuck Dockey is going to try to give you guys a heads up on that. Okay. Mr. Dockey, are you on the call? Um, bear with me. Good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, yes, this uh, request uh, is to expand some work that's already being done uh, within the Pratt Farm Meadows. Yeah, thank you for the for the for the map. Um, as you may know, uh, uh, the last two or three years, uh, there's uh, been an effort to bring uh, what were abandoned meadows that were going up to brush back to meadow. Uh, there's the potential for uh, a CSA farm in that area. Um, and uh, it's turned out to be a lovely area for walking around a perimeter. There's a path shown in yellow there that's been uh, regularly mown uh, so that uh, uh, while the rest of the meadow grows up and is just cut annually, uh, the uh, path is walkable. Um, and the commission previously approved uh, 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 two trail sections within the woodland that overlooks the Whitehall Brook. Um, what this request is for is removal of uh, invasive species, uh, particularly autumn olive, um, uh, that encroaches on the edge of the field. Uh, the, the, nature and, uh, uh, the nature of autumn olive is that it uh, uh, reaches for the light. Um, it's nasty stuff, uh, and uh, the, it tends to encroach in the field. In fact, uh, we just um, after this request was submitted, I noticed one where it has stretched from its base uh, well over 20 feet uh, into the field. And this is a progressive process and uh, ultimately reduces the area of the field, not to mention uh, providing all too many uh, uh, seed sources uh, to spread it yet further. What we are proposing is that along the edge of the field, uh, we either pull or cut depending on uh, what seems most feasible to the contractor, most likely uh, Mike Bolson, who has uh, uh, done a great deal of work on the area already. Uh, and some of that area is within 200 feet of Whitehall Brook. Um, or uh, within 100 feet of the bordering wetlands. Mm. Uh, we'd like to consider this uh, as uh, uh, an exempt activity. Um, the uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, environmental improvement uh, and the work uh, is done up on a level area. So even if uh, we're able to pull some of the stumps, which is long-term the most effective. Um, the, uh, there's not an erosion hazard. Uh, the area from which the plants will be removed will be maintained as meadow uh, and be uh, probably just uh, uh, used as part of the peripheral trail system. 
Okay. Um, I think that all makes sense. So this request came, I believe, from Mr. Kumalo. Uh, uh, correct. The um, uh, this. Uh, area I work with Elaine Lazarus on it. She walked the site with us, uh, and uh, 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 we work to prepare the request for the town manager. Since that it's uh, under the town manager's jurisdiction. Okay. Through the chair. Yes, Don. Go ahead. Yeah, Elaine. Apologize. She she couldn't make the meeting, so uh, Chuck was able to. Um, come in, uh, in her stead. Yeah, yeah no problem. This, I'm just curious, Don, this is kind of an unusual one where it's under the town manager's jurisdiction. Why, why is that? Do you have any insight? I'm not on the answer. <laughs> um, you mean jurisdiction for property management? Yeah. Yes. I think it's an open space, isn't it, Ed? Well, no, I know, yeah. but it's very unusual for Norman to put a request in like this. I was just curious. Um, well, that is that is curious because whoever is managing or whoever's got the custody of the chair, care of the control of the property would be the one following the request. So unless it's, if it's the board of selectmen, if it's in their control, then yes, Norman would do that. But Ed, is it open space? you, Mr. Chairman. Ed, is it open space? I'll, uh, I'll look up on the GIS too to see. Just, if I can... just curious, uh, Don. Don't worry about it. Um, right. The, the um, my okay. understanding is that it is still uh, that uh, ultimately some of the area will be used for uh, water supply, the uh, a new well field. Uh, okay, that makes sense then. For yep. The, yep. Yep. Uh, no. CSA farm. It is not yet under. Uh, a conservation type management. Okay, so Got it's it. still in board of selection or some select board. So that's a, I think so. A, yeah. Okay, so that, that, makes that, that makes sense. If it's not under a conservation restriction, it might be a future uh, water supply area, then I, I, I get it. Okay. All right. Does any, uh, are there any questions, comments from other commission members? I think this is pretty straightforward. This is, this so Ed, I just want to attest to Mike Bolson's thoroughness and carefulness um, and Chuck's skill at oversight. Um, if they're involved in this, I would have no concerns. Um, that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Ed. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Um, yes, go ahead, Jim. Say, it's the same thing for me. Mike Bolson has done a fantastic job and Chuck has done more work than anybody I've ever seen uh, together. Um, I do have a question, Don. Is this map part of our Google Docs? Because I can't find it. This uh, aerial. This yeah, view, it should right? be in the uh, in the work session folder under the yeah, uh, okay. file for Town of Hockington, 110, 112 yeah. Fruit Street. Yeah, I just didn't see it there. I saw the one that had the. Well, it, it's it's tied in. the The li label of the document is request to manage invasive plants, so. Yeah. You'd first okay, find this, it. then you got to scroll down to find oh, it. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thanks. So it's all one doc. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is an exemption request. So if there are no, and if there are no comments or questions from commission members, um, questions or comments from the public. Then uh, I think we're all set to go, Don. Yeah, we can draft up a response. Okay, great, us. thank you. Um, Anna, uh, Melissa and Carrie uh, joined the meeting the past couple of minutes, just for the record. Thank you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on to the formal. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Dodgy. Uh, let's move on to the formal uh, public applications. Ofria 200 Wood Street. This is a notice of intent for a septic replacement and to refurbish buildings. And I have to read this one. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 25th, 
2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. virtually here virtually online to hear all persons interested in notice of intent filed by Paul Afria to replace a failed septic system with associated site work. Location is 200 Wood Street, assesses map U9 block 19, lot zero. All right. Dan McIntyre representing the homeowner. Good evening, Mr. McIntyre. Good evening. So this, this project was subject to an order of conditions that the commission issued back in 2014 mm -hmm. for uh, refurbishing the building and putting in a new septic system. Uh, the project stalled and the order expired. Uh, recently, the, the owner started taking it up again and we were asked to come back and, and uh, get a new order of conditions for the work. Okay. So uh, we did take the opportunity to revise the septic design. Uh, the, the owner, the owner uh, hired an architect to, to look at the best way to rehab this, uh, this building. And it's gonna require all new plumbing. So the original 2014 order, we had the septic tanks in the back where the cesspool is in the mm -hmm. 50 foot buffer. Mm -hmm. With the uh, plumbing being revised, we could put the tank out front and keep the, the tank and the septic field all, all outside the 50 foot buffer. We will have some grading in the 50 foot buffer, but we're keeping the, the improvements for the septic system outside of that. Uh, in addition, the, uh, the small garage attached to the barn is beyond repair and they would just like to take that down and there's some significant foundation work that needs to be done on parts of the building. So there's gonna be repairs to the foundation made as well. Okay. And there is, there's gonna be some tree removal required in the uh, 50 to 100 foot buffer for the septic. And there's one large tree next to the barn that needs to come down uh, that's right near the wetlands in order to probably, properly uh, get scaffolding up there and, and reside that, that barn and paint it. So back, back in 2014, the commission wanted to see a no mow area right along the uh, wetland. Mm -hmm. So we've maintained that. I think we, we adjusted a little bit to make it a little bit larger than we had back in 2014. Uh, but essentially the property has been unmaintained since then and it's kind of overgrown anyways. So we, we've got the mo the no mow area in there. What were the hatched sections there? Um, that's the that's the no mow area. That's the no mow area. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, between the no mow area and the house, is that currently lawn right now? What is that? Overgrown? I think it was lawn at one point. It's pretty much overgrown right now. Is this the house where the antique place is out of the garage? Uh, I think yes. so. Yes, that's the house. It's, it hasn't been, uh, that hasn't been operational for at least a year. Yeah, that's the backyard there. It's pretty overgrown. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's a little overgrown, I would say. <laughs> um, okay. There's, there's a shot right there where the septic is going. <clears throat> mm hmm. Okay, um, so I don't know. Did you get a chance to take a look at uh, Lucas's comments, Mr. McIntyre? I did. Um, I did. I didn't have a chance to formally respond, and I'm still waiting for a, a response from the homeowner about. Uh, there was a question about what's going to be happening in the garage area. Yeah. So I'm still waiting for a response from that, whether that's going to be lawn or patio or what. 
whatnot. So, yeah, and then the D series and C series flagging um, weren't reestablished. Um, yeah, originally we did a lot of flagging all the way out into the back area. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the homeowner kind of reviewed that. He was looking at trying to get a development and maybe a, another lot out there. But that that just is not going to pan out. So we okay. didn't refresh the flags back there. We just refreshed the flags on the house side of the stream. Okay. And and to my knowledge, there's no work that's going to happen on the other side at this time. Okay. Sure. Yes, go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. I'm just reading through your. I, I went through your comments earlier. I was just kind of perusing them right now. Uh, but go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Yeah. So the, the so I guess sort of the reason why I raised that question was. Uh, on the other side of the stream, it looks like previously there was a large vegetable garden or some sort of garden. There's an old foundation back there. Um, and I guess just, you know, if the area is just going to be, when I was out there, I, I actually came across a, a running hose that I had advised Mr. McIntyre about. I don't know if he got that message or not, but, um, you know, it's just a question of if, if that area is going to be, if somebody has plans to go in and clear that in the future, because, you know, if you were just to walk out there now, you'd say, oh, this is an area where maybe there'd be future use for a garden or, or what have you. Um, right. You know, it seems like it would make sense to approve the wetland flags now. But if not, it's just, I guess, just noting perhaps in the order that that area is not approved. So any work in that area would be subject to some sort of additional filing potentially. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that would be best if we could, uh, if, I did apprise the homeowner that if they want to do something in their future, it's going to require going back to the commission. But right now there's, to my knowledge, no plans to go back there and do anything. Okay. Um, so the, and my only other, the, the only other comment I, I think of note was uh, if the commission wanted to see a PIB um, out there, upgrading of the NOMO area to kind of memorialize that on the plan and uh, and on the site. Did something? Yeah, that's kind of our standard operating procedure. So I think we would want to see that. Um, is that okay, Mr. McIntyre? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so just you know, as long as the I think we can vote on this subject to, you know, submittal of a new plan with the PIB demarcated. Um, uh, I don't think we have the uh, DEB file number yet, though. I didn't see it come through. Okay. Correct. It would have to be subject to whenever they issue it. Right. That sure. wouldn't preclude the vote commission from voting, you know. It would just yeah, be we could still to, vote, you know, just be contingent upon. Um, yeah, whenever they gave us the number. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me open it up to the uh, commission members at this point for comments, yep. questions. Yes, please, through the chair. Yep, go ahead, Ted. I'm looking, um, by the way, I am also a big fan of the PIBs being installed, um, but I'm looking at the no mo areas and I'm wondering why there are gaps. Is it necessary to get to those culverts? If so, why? Those look like fairly big gaps between the no-mo areas. Well, there, there's two existing culverts there that are stream crossings. So we, we felt that we just leave those open in case they need to access the back for whatever. That's that's why we did that. And that, that was the same as we had back in 2014. Okay, my, my worry is, is it might be an invitation to dump yard waste or something back there because they look like paths and I got no trouble with people walking around back there. It's their yard after all, but I fear that it's an invitation for yard waste to be dumped uh, in that direction. I mean, those are pretty wide uh, openings, I think, just eyeballing it. It looks like they're 10 feet wide or so. Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they look like 10 feet wide. But they, yeah. they want access to the back portion of the property. Is that the... Well, the, there's there's access there now. We just didn't want to lose it. Right, that, well, that's what I'm saying. There's, there's access to the back 
portion I think, I think that's I think that's the only access to the back. Okay. Do we need both of those? I, again, my worry is an invitation to yard waste going back there, kind of what we just saw in the last property we looked at, where people were dumping yard waste in the wetlands. Through the chair? Yep, go ahead, Matt. So, uh, I mean, the whole area is very overgrown at this point, so neither of those um, access points, well, especially the one just looking at the plan on the right, um, is very overgrown and not really passable at this point. So they'd have to be sort of an, an effort to actually open that back up. Um, and that really struck me more as potentially sort of a foot traffic. Um, I suppose you could get through with a wheelbarrow or something, if, you know, if you were, again, accessing that area in the back. The one on the left looked like you, it was actually sort of vehicular access through there, you know, like a pickup truck or something. Um, could get back through there. It's not a driveway by any means, but it uh, looks like a, it's the crossing is more substantial. Um, yeah, the pictures of it there. Um, so just for whatever that's worth, Ted, just thought I'd kind of give you that description. The, the back side of the property, Matt, uh, like when you pass through that access and you kind of, my recollection is just looking at the um, assessor's map, there's a fairly large area in the back of the property. I mean, is that all, that's not resource area back there, right? That you know of? I, I think as we go way back, there is resource area. I think Goddard flagged that back in 2014. I think I think there is wetlands further back, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't, the furthest I went was really to the, sort of the back yeah. side of these wetlands and then they, they weren't, they hadn't been reflagged. So there was really not much for me to look at back there. So I didn't, I didn't investigate further. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can understand maybe the, the access point to the left, Mr. McIntyre, to kind of get to the back side of the property. Um, you know, if they want to put yard waste and stuff back there, as long as it's not in buffer zone in the back side of the property, I mean, that's there. Right. Um, you know, they, they, you know, they're allowed to do that, obviously. Well, can, um, we, can we narrow narrow the one up on the on the right just for, you know, foot traffic? traffic. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. That's, okay. that's okay with me. Are we leaving one wide enough eventually if it gets cleaned up for vehicle traffic? That a vehicle rumbling over that that uh, uh, the stream crossing there, the culvert. Is that is that strong enough for vehicle traffic? Do we know if that would be safe? Would that begin to crumble? Well, when I'm, when I'm thinking vehicle, I'm thinking tractor. If if you look at the, you know, the right the front of the property, the septic system, the barn, and the house really prevent anything from getting in the backyard. Okay. Larger than a tractor. So you might take like a. Like a job. landscaping tractor or a yeah. lawnmower back there. I mean, all right, that, that, that I'm, I think I'm okay with that. And I do like the other one being narrowed, so it's foot traffic, not wider. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, other comments, chair. questions from the commission? Through the chair. Go ahead, Ed. Is Ed. Um, the, 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 the comment about invasive species, it's obviously something that's near and dear. Um, if that NOMO area is all full of invasive species, it would seem like we would want to clear that out before we replanted it with something appropriate rather than bittersweet or whatever is there now. That's my only comment. Yeah, that, that, that was where I was kind of going, Matt. I think you, the other comment you had was the significant, you know, amount of invasive, invasive species growing on the site, is there any plan to remove any of that, Mr. McIntyre, or what's? There, there wasn't, uh, you know, a formal plan to start eradicating all that. Uh, where we, where we hit it from doing the septic system, uh, we intend to get rid of it in that area. But to take on a whole eradication plan of evasives is could be overwhelming on this site. Mm -hmm. yeah, through the chair, um, there, there's all there's everything sort of the whole 
the whole nine yards of all different uh, invasives that you find in the areas out there. Um, the Japanese knotweed was seen mostly confined to the area of the the culvert and the, and the rear access on the left. Um, and again, that's was sort of clearly there, and, and maybe somebody had cut it back at some point, but it's gonna, you know, that's gonna be an ongoing thing. So if, if they wanted to maintain that access, I think they're gonna have to do at least, you know, sort of the, the, the minimum of cutting that knot weed back or it'll just create a, an impenetrable mass through there. And then, um, you know, I, I think it's gonna be as much of what people want, whoever lives in the house, what they want their backyard to look like. It's either gonna be an overgrown right. tangle of vines and invasives or or not yeah in terms of i mean if they do maintain like that access way there matt you know and they're removing the invasives uh yeah i don't think we want them taking the invasives and kind of dumping them in the back of the property right because then they're just gonna there's the potential for them to reestablish and you know yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I think having a condition that maybe says any you know invasive material that's cut on the site should be disposed of properly off-site or something like that. I think would be appropriate. Yeah, that's that. That's yeah, that, that makes sense. Going. The real issue is disposal of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, is that something that you can work with, Mr. McIntyre? Yes. With the, with the homeowner. Okay. Yeah. We just we don't want them cutting it back and then taking it you know to the back side of the property dumping it and then, you know, it just gets reestablished. Yeah, we're just right? transferring the problem. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Should, should you were discussing earlier, should we mow the no mow area once a year or just let it go? Um, it's, I mean, I, I think it's okay mowing it once a year, you know, so it, uh, so it doesn't, you know, continue to get overgrown. Um, I, I think that's fine. That's kind of a standard. Um, that's permissible by the commission, you know, once or twice a year to kind of go back there, mow it. Uh, but, you know, other than that, you know, we want it to kind of, um, you know, remain, um, uh, you know, untouched other than, other than the mowing a couple times a year. Okay. Matt, does that make sense, Don? Yeah, I was yeah. thinking uh, we might want to update, you know, the uh, the plan out says no mow area. We might want to just have a detail uh, limited, you know, mow area, you know, and then we can say it's once a year in the fall, you know, uh, and then we can, it would be nice on the plan and, and then we can memorialize it in the order with a, with a condition. Yeah, I've got to add the PIBs anyway, so we can, we can update the plan. Great. However you'd like. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, through the chair, this is that. I have one last question. Yep. Dan, do you happen to know where this stream ends up? Uh, I really don't. It heads out over toward in front of the, the Ophrias live in that house right there. It goes there and over, I think, into Larda's property, doesn't it? I think, yeah, I think you're right. Well, my, my thought being it probably ends up in the Sudbury River, and if they wanted to do invasives work, um, conceivably, they might be able to get a grant from SISMA. You could pass that little tidbit along. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you know, so long as they're not doing anything on the northern side of the resource areas, you know, if they do want to do that, they have to come back before the commission, right? Um, and I, I, can, I can put where, a note to that effect on the plan too, so it's memorialized there too. That, that would be fantastic. If you could do that. Uh, then the PIBs um, on the plan, the NOMO um, notation, um, uh, just being kind of rejiggered so that it's, you know, more once or twice a year. Um, and I think that covers everything. Uh, 
And then, you know, if you can submit us a revised plan, Mr. McIntyre. Yes. <clears throat> I can do that. And, and then also we have to wait on the DEP file number. Right. Um, okay. All right. If I can get a motion to uh, close and approve the notice of intent with the conditions uh, discussed and specified. So moved. All right. That was Jim and a second. Second, Janine. Janine, okay, and we'll do the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Jim? And Jeff is an aye. I'm not sure what happened to Ed and Jim, but um, okay. Oh my God. We, I said we, aye. You called me. I pressed the little thing. I said aye. Oh, okay. You're on mute, I think. Okay. All yeah, right. Very thank good. Very much. Thank yeah, you, Mr. McIntyre. I think Ed and I both responded to one of them. I thought I heard Ted. Yeah. You thought he heard Ed. I think I agree. Not. Okay. <laughs> and I was frozen when you read my name, but I'm an I. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Moving along. Claro, zero Hayden Row. This is a request for reconsideration. And I have to read this one. Uh, Jeff, before you read it. Yep. Uh, the commission would take a vote to reopen the hearing. Then we would uh, read the hearing to, you know, open it up. Okay. Um, Okay, sorry about that. All right, so um, yes. So, so this, this is, uh, yeah, this request is for re reconsideration. Row. So yeah. then the commission would. Sorry, go ahead, Don. Sorry, yeah. Since it's a request for reconsideration, um, we'll kind of kind of do 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 both parts in this meeting. We'll take a vote if the commission wants to reopen, and then we. we then we're enabled to reopen it by, we've already posted the public hearing notice. You, and if the commission says, yeah, let's reopen it, we'll read it and we'll reopen the hearing. Okay. And it's my understanding that the applicant has modified uh, or is amenable to modifying what they had previously submitted, correct? They'll be able to present, yeah, revi uh, revised plan. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so do we have a motion to um, uh, reconsider the vote uh, that was previous? No. The, 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 Just to the reopen request, the hearing. To, to reopen the hearing for the reconsideration for zero Hayden Row Street. I'll make that motion. It's Melissa. Okay, Melissa, in a second. Ted, second. Okay, and we'll do the roll call vote. Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Janine. Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. All right. Okay, the Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at seven o'clock p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a Request for reconsideration filed by David Claro to construct a single family house with associated site work. The location, Zero Hayden Row, assesses map U25, block 16, lot A. Okay, do we have the applicant on the call or a representative of the applicant? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, there are several of us. This is Matthew Watsky. I'm here as counsel. I filed the uh, the request for reconsideration. That's my letter from uh, March of 2021. Yep. Uh, I have with me last here. Last good evening. Good evening, everybody. It's good to see everybody again. Uh, have with me here Scott Goddard as the wetlands consultant and Bob Poxo, Poxon as the engineer who drew the revised plan and I haven't seen him, but I think that uh, Mr. Claro was going to attend as well. I may not be moving the the little the little icon photos the right way. So um, there he is. Um, that as we've 
expressed in the request for reconsideration, uh, it, it, I, I have presented that the, the application as it was presented uh, met the objective standards of the, of the Conservation Commission's rules and regulations in the bylaw. Nevertheless, there were specific things that were raised in the, in the, the denial that we've attempted to address with a revised plan. And if you could um, move to the revised plan, that would be helpful. There we go. Um, so one, one specific technical detail that we noted was uh, in denial basis or finding number five, that the uh, single family house was proposed with a full basement, um, but that the observed groundwater level was not from a test pit done during high groundwater season, it was during a drought. So we arranged to have a test pit done on the site. Um, yeah, if we could zoom in on this a little bit, I'll do a, a basic presentation on this and then we can have either Scott or Bob Poxon uh, uh, focus in. So the, the, uh, there's a table there on the left that indicates the groundwater elevation the left side of this plan, you can see the numbers, there we go. So now we have the elevation of groundwater as observed during high groundwater season is elevation 102.5. That is higher than it was observed previously. The house has been redesigned so that if you look at the, the numbers inside the footprint of the house, you can see you got top of concrete. So that's the top of the foundation is elevation 114. SL is the, the slab, that's the, the, the surface of the, of the basement floor in the basement is elevation 106. So as designed now, you have uh, three and a half feet of uh, separation between the, uh, the basement floor and high groundwater elevation, uh, which uh, addresses a legitimate concern that the commission raised that you, if you build the house and it's down into the groundwater, you're gonna have sump pumps going nonstop and, and water being sprouted out and, and basically you're, you're uh, struggling to keep your house dry and, uh, and uh, effectively draining groundwater. Um, so the house has been elevated up uh, well above groundwater. And then um, another benefit of this is that there is effectively very little excavation now taking place on the site because with the house elevated up in order to make the grades work uh, the grades are made with, uh, with fill material that's brought in, and all of the fill material is outside of the buffer zone. Uh, so that's on the, um, as we're looking at it, the, the bottom left side of the house. And you can see the buffer zone line with the, the VBV and all of the grading there uh, to make the elevations work is outside buffer zone. Um, one of the questions that the Commission then raised was sort of comparing this this lot with um, other lots that were frontage lots uh, along this road, and as excuse me, as it's noted in the decision, those other lots had significant areas of work that were approved within buffer zone. Um, a total of forty one thousand three hundred thirty eight square feet of alteration was allowed in the three other lots. It's an average of uh, 13,779 square feet that was approved by the Conservation Commission on the other lots, or that I think in one of, one of the lots, someone did the work without permission and it was an enforcement issue. This lot has only um, 2,600 or thereabouts square feet of total alteration proposed uh, on the lot that's within jurisdiction, significantly under the uh, the, the area of work within buffer zone that was approved by the commission on the other lots. Um, and we think that this is, this is fully consistent with both the objective standards that the commission has set in uh, the bylaws looking for a minimum of a 50 foot setback, which this has, um, as well as complying with the intent of the rule. So you have nothing going on in this lot that's closer than 50 feet from the wetland. Um, there was another another uh, issue raised in the in the order, and I'm going to ask Scott Goddard to address the sort of technical issue on this. But um, question was raised: um, Why has the why has the property been proposed with with a two car garage shown on it rather than eliminating the garage? And I understand that in um, at least one of the other 
uh, lots that are similarly situated, the house was made smaller and a, a two car garage was eliminated from that property. Um, so, so one one obvious response is that this this property actually has less alteration within buffer zone than the other lot, even even though the other lot had the garage removed, uh, and this this property does not. But um, our view is that technically, um, having a two car garage is better uh, environmentally than having just a paved uh, parking surface, um, as I'm sure you're 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 well aware. Under DEP's rules for uh, capturing and infiltrating stormwater, roof runoff is considered clean water, and it can be infiltrated and recharged into the ground without prior treatment. Um, in contrast, paved driveways, um, you have sand, you have salt, you have drippings from the vehicles. Um, there, it, it's not the same. And the question: What would you do if like, you would? You would probably need to have uh, the, basically the, the square footage of the two-car garage paved uh, so that there's enough parking area for the vehicles that would come into this property. That poses a significant challenge um, uh, that I know the commission struggles with in, in many projects. Uh, uh, what do you do to uh, require long-term maintenance of the paved surfaces that the vehicles are parking on or, or driving on? Um, so having a two-car garage is, in fact, better. Uh, you have clean water. It gets captured, directed into the infiltration system, which is shown in the in the front of the from the front of the house. That's the one to the four infiltration beds. Um, and uh, and so we think that the the project, as it's redesigned, is better than the prior uh, design, and um, and fully complies with the commission's rules and regulations. Um, I don't know, Scott. Did you want to weigh in any further on the on the, well, the stormwater issues? No, I, I think I think Matt, I, I would agree with what you said um, from from a technical perspective. That's completely accurate. The the two car garage in in essence protects the wetlands better as a barrier from runoff. And the alternative here, replacing the garage with pavement to allow for a side entry uh, garage under the house would in fact extend the pavement and the, and the surface for the cars closer to the, the wetlands than currently is proposed. So I think this project as proposed uh, is, a, is better suited for protection of the wetlands and the buffer zone. I will add, as a, and Matt, we didn't go over this um, as, as part of the of our presentation prep or anything like that, but from my perspective as a wetland scientist, you know, this, it's worthy to note that the wetland on the site that we're discussing is a very, very marginal wetland. If, if you remember, Matt and I spent a fair bit of time on this site and the areas that are mapped as wetlands that establish these buffer zones are marginally wet in my assessment. So they just kind of barely make it. You know, it's a gray, very gray area, a very flat, very transitional site. So uh, they don't produce uh, any features that are particularly noteworthy in terms of habitat, internal vernal pools, streams, water bodies, unique habitats, nothing like that. It's just a, a flat groundwater breakout area with some, some very low level topography. And then out behind us, we even have that, that bike path or uh, walking path out in the rear of this property that separates it from uh, the more substantial wetlands um, uh, to the uh, to the upside of the, of the of the site plan, whatever direction we're talking about, north, south, east, west. So um, that's kind of my two cents on what Matt's talking about. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Waski and Mr. Goddard. Uh, appreciate the, the background. Um, so you stated that there were, I think you, Mr. Waski said there were 41,000 square feet of unauthorized disturbance. No, I didn't say unauthorized. Um, in, in, the, disturbance. in the in the findings of fact in this order, which are on uh, page 19 of 22 of the PDF that I have, so it's paragraph paragraph six of the. So findings. that's the cumulative impact you're referring to. Yes, it's the commission's analysis of cumulative impact. 
Okay, thank um, you. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, that's okay. right. There you go. You just had it. Yeah. So as you know, we we have to. You know, this is uh, not a standalone site. We have to look at cumulative impact um, with the other uh, development um, on the overall uh, property under ownership. Um, I guess my second point is in referring to the, you know, the other lot that we kind of propose as an example um, for you to take a look at as you were contemplating the design for this one, that lot had previous disturbance on it, whereas this is an undisturbed lot. Um, so there's a, um, you know, so we're not really comparing apples to apples on this um, compared to the, 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 you know, the one that we kind of offered up as a uh, um, example to look at um, in terms of development. And I guess I mean, I'll open up to the other commission members, but you know, the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone is discretionary under the bylaw. Um, we have a four bedroom house with a two car garage. And it just seems to me, you know, from my standpoint that, um, you know, the scope of the project could be reduced you know, why, I mean, why does it need to be a four bedroom house? You know, why, why can't it be a three bedroom house with a one car garage? Uh, which, you know, and there would still in that scenario be impact between the 50 and 100 foot, um, but you know, it'd be smaller, uh, less impact. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't have as much impervious surface with a uh, you know one car garage as opposed to two, but that's kind of my my thoughts. And uh, let me open it up to the other commission members for their uh, comments and thoughts. Through the chair. Yes, Ted, go ahead. Uh, Jeff, I agree with everything you've said about the garage specifically. I am completely swayed that a garage is better than a driveway. However, I look at this and the driver is already, the one proposed is wide enough for two cars. The square that is a garage could just be lawn or yard and park the cars in the driveway. I have lived in my house now for 22 years. I have not had a driveway the entire time. I, I mean, a garage the entire time I've lived here. I've never in my life had a garage where I parked my car. I know that life can live without a garage. Um, and I agree, the house could be smaller. I, I feel like this is just too big a project on too difficult a plot of undisturbed land. And we haven't seen those adjustments made. Thank you, Ted. To the chair. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, firstly, Ted, you haven't lived until you've had a garage. Um, but my serious question, what is the distance, the, the setback at this point from the street? Uh, proposed setback, uh, Bob Poxon, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, the required, the required setback in town is 50 feet, and that's what we're holding, 50 feet. Okay, I realize you'd have to go to the, I, I didn't realize that it was 50 feet there, because like where we are, it's not. Um, I didn't know whether it's possible to push the garage towards the street, but you'd have to then obviously get a variance. But that seems like a possibility. Oh, uh, I'd be glad to address that question with the chair, if, if the chair wishes. Sure, go ahead, Mr. Waski. Okay. So zoning variances are are only legally issued in very, very limited circumstances. And in my view, seeking a waiver of the front yard setback for this property where there's only what 2,600 square feet of work proposed even with the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction doesn't, doesn't meet the Zoning Act criteria for grant of a zoning variance. Uh, so it seems to me the, 
the, the really the, the regulatory question is not simply that that the commission has what discretion to to uh, to approve work within within the buffer zone, but the it it it, it has it has a, a requirement to act in a way that's consistent with the substantial evidence that's presented. You can't just arbitrarily say it's too much work. You need to have have some basis for for concluding that the work that's proposed is going to cause an adverse effect on the wetland interests. And with with just as an example, the commissioner now saying completely agrees that having a two car garage is better than a driveway. I mean, people recognize and DEP recognizes that having a garage means you have clean water coming off of the roof and it's getting infiltrated. So you're, you're protecting the interests of the Wetlands Protection Act and the local bylaw more uh, thoroughly with this than you would if you, if you push for a, a sort of squeezed in smaller house and without a garage. So we think that we've, we've designed something that, that complies with all of the, the, the objective standards that you have under your bylaw. Um, I'll also put this out there. Um, if, we, if we are successful in, in having the commission uh, uh, approve this project, what I would anticipate we would do, and perhaps it's, it's in a, a single vote, uh, is to have the commission approve it under the Wetlands Protection Act as well enabling us to withdraw the request for the superseding order of conditions from DEP so that the commission regains full uh, local regulatory control over the work. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Ted. I just want to make sure my comment on the garage is clear. I am not proposing that where the garage is get paved. And I don't think anybody says a garage is better than nature. I'm proposing keep the driveway the way it is and eliminate the structure inside the 100 foot buffer and do not pave that area. I, I, I understand that. And, and Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Wasky. So one of the things that I see very, very commonly when work is proposed within buffer zone to wetlands is, is conservation commissions imposing uh, conditions of a permit prohibiting the use of, of um, excuse me, fertilizers and lawn chemicals of various types. And so if you, if you eliminate the garage, you're creating an additional 400 something square feet that somebody's probably going to want to put lawn fertilizers on, which the commission would then have as a longstanding uh, enforcement uh, regulatory compliance problem, assuming you were to, to put in a condition limiting the use of fertilizers. So again, you have an extremely limited area of backyard on this property up against the limited disturbance that's, that's permanent. And by having the garage there, it, it isolates all of the, all of the, the areas that you're gonna be using as lawn to the, to the front and ensuring that you only have clean water that's captured and infiltrated. To the chair, uh, I, I echo the other comments um, from commission members that I just feel it's too big of a, a project uh, for this challenging site. Thank you, Jean. I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna go back to, you know, my comments. Um, you know, why can't it be a three bedroom house with a one car garage to minimize impact of the buffer zone? I, I you know, I get the rationale, um, but you know, I, I, I just think that, um, you know, my sense is, is that you're trying to put, um, you know, trying to put too much into, you know, a small area here, um, too much house, too much garage into a small area that's in buffer zone. And I, you know, and I will go back to, you know, what we kind of iterated in the, in the first pass at this, you know, I, I think the scale of the project could be reduced. Um, uh, you know, that could make the, you know, that could make this workable on the, from the commission standpoint. Um, but, you know, if the applicant is unwilling to do that, you know, um, I 
I guess it, it, it is what it is. Um, So, Mr. Chairman, this is Scott Goddard. Can I make a comment slash question, if that's okay? Sure. So, to kind of circle back to a comment that Attorney Watsky um, made earlier, that approvals and denials of projects under regulatory structures are are based on certain criteria or standards or thresholds or interests that are either adequately or inadequately protected. And as a wetland scientist and consultant in this case, it, it's, um, it's a challenge from my angle to help advise the applicant on ways to uh, demonstrate regulatory compliance on this site. If what I've heard from the commission is seemingly ambiguous on what criteria is being measured for for compliance there's a there's a talk a lot about just too big too big or not far enough away this maybe more vague kind of things as opposed to is there a particular water quality issue or a wildlife habitat issue that has been identified that we're trying to protect because then at that point we can assure that our our design addresses those particular concerns and interests that are specified in the bylaw. Yeah, I mean, I, my, you know, my sense, Mr. Gard, isn't that it's a water quality issue. It's a buffer zone incursion issue. Okay. Um, you know, as I said, it's at the discretion of the commission what's allowed between the 50 and 100 under the bylaw. And, um, you know, what we approve sets a precedent. Okay. And what we're asking the applicant to do is minimize the impact in the buffer zone, which is a resource area under the bylaw. Um, or it's a you know buffer zone of the bylaw. We're, we're asking the applicant to reduce the scope of the project. I mean, I don't know how to be more straightforward than that. You know, put a three bedroom house with no garage or a three bedroom house with a one car garage, minimize the impervious surface. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. I mean, I think we said this on the first iteration of this, you know, I've said it, you've heard the other commission members say it, um, you know, so I, I mean, it comes down to whether uh, your applicant is willing to do that or not. You know, I understand He's trying to work within the economics of the project here, but the commission doesn't view that um, and doesn't contemplate that when we approve a project. Okay. So, you know, and I guess the other point that I'll make is, you know, wetland quality, it, it's, you know, it's a wetland and it's a resource area. You know, I can make the argument that it's, you know, the minimus, you know, kind of quality wetland, but you know, we don't we don't contemplate that um, either. Uh, you know, yeah. really, when when we're making these decisions, so um, and and we have to look at the cumulative impact. Okay, this isn't a standalone project. There was other buffer zone disturbance and the other houses that were put in here. Um, so you know, I think. Um, you know, when you look at all of those different facets, um, you know, hopefully you can understand where we're coming from. And I may, Mr. Chairman, just on yeah, uh, just real point. quick, Mr. Wasi, because we have to sure. move on. We have a busy okay. agenda. I, I, I understand. Um, um, when you consider the, the cumulative impacts, and you, you've said a number of times that this is all part of a uh, uh, the, the same the same area of development, but the the lots that were permitted beforehand were not directly in the line of title of this lot, and there's nothing in the line of title of this lot that one would find in the record to indicate that it is subject to limitations on development. I know the Conserv conservation commission knows very well how to require. Uh, applicants to impose development restrictions on on undeveloped land or other lots that are going to be developed. Um, Mr. Claro purchased this property directly from uh, the original trust 
uh, that that owned the other land and the other lots were developed by by a separate developer at, at, who did not take title to this parcel. Uh, so there's there's no record notice telling telling Mr. Claro or anybody else who had been contemplating buying this lot that there were going to be these development restrictions. Um. Okay, it's been a while since we've looked at this, but Don, my recollection is these were all under common ownership at one point. Is that correct? Yeah, according all, to all the records on the registry of deeds, these are the A and R plans. A and R plans, and then and then deeds conveyed out to to the developer who sought the approvals on the other lots, and this lot was sold directly from the original owner. To Mr. Claro did not come through the title of the prior developer. Yeah, but it goes back to the original owner who subdivided the land. The original owner didn't seek the permits and approvals, and, and there's nothing in the line of title that someone searching the line of title of this property would find to indicate that there are conditions indicating that, uh, that there's there are restrictions on development. Okay, well, why don't we... Oh, well, public we, record, it's in the... Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Don. Sorry, I, uh, I don't, it just it's all public record, and then it's in the commission's regulations. So. Yeah, we we have to move on. So, Mr. Waski, um, Mr. Goddard, why don't we continue this out? You know, you can regroup with your client um, or the applicant and see, you know, what you want to do, and then. Um, you know, we'll continue this out to our next meeting, which is on June 8th. That's okay. Um, I will, we'll take a look at the ownership as well, but, um, you know, these were all under common ownership at one point. So I, I, you know, I'll have to double check, but I, I just, at this point, I think I disagree with your, your point that it's, a. Um, I, I, I can provide the commission with the, with the line of title to explain the, the issue. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so you you want to continue this to June eighth, and we'll we'll have some further discussion. Uh, correct. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And if you can just send an email to Don requesting that continuation, please. I can do that. Yes. Okay. Or, or to Ki to Kim. Or to Kim. Uh, I'm sorry. Right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, Toll Brothers, Whalen Road, Lot 22. This is a notice of intent for a single family house. Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at seven o'clock p.m. Virtually online to hear all persons interested in notice of intent filed by Toll Brothers to construct a single family house with associated site work, zero Whalen Road, Lot 22, map R23, block 125 and 126. Okay, Mr. Cusick, are you with us tonight? I am. I am. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Chairman and Commission members. Um, we are here for a handful, so I'll try to um, be as clear and concise as possible as we move through. Uh, if I go too quick, please stop me and I'll answer any questions you may have. Uh, lot 22 is the next in line. You can see it in the shaded um, area at the screen. So it's on the Whalen side of the, um, of the development. And when we look at the plan, that's essentially what we're, what we're looking at. Um, this particular lot has, you know, consistent with previous, uh, previous plans. We've got the PIB along the backyard, uh, pulled in, um, getting about a 40 foot or so backyard. You've got the PIBs along the back of the, of the property. And it's about 3,900 square feet of impact between the 50 and the uh, 100. The closest impact to the wetland is all the way to the far right. You're about 60 feet away at the property line. Uh, on the right hand side, again, fairly straight forward um, application. We received some um, 
really it's just minor kind of housekeeping um, comments from um, from Matt. I could go over any of those in um, detail, but there are more really more comments than uh, significant plan changes. Okay, Matt, did you just want to uh, give us a brief overview of your comments here? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, as John said, they're really more housekeeping type things. Uh, and a lot of these will apply to all the different lots that we're going to discuss tonight. Um, one of them was just kind of being consistent on the plans of referencing PIBs as opposed to permanent wetland markers, especially where these markers aren't really going in all that close to a wetland. So I think just calling them PIBs consistent with all other plans in the town makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, Rosie controls look fine. Uh, and then again, just sort of a general comment. I don't, and I don't know if John can clarify this. If, if there is in fact going to be a stabilized construction exit on each one of these lots or because it's, it's shown as a detail in the plan really just clarification if there is going to be one it should be shown where it's going to be um, yeah and again i think that one was there's one for the entire subdivision so it's in the it's in the roadway itself um that was part of the approved subdivision uh, i don't think the intent is is to put one on the um on each individual lot as as they do it um i just had that detail in there just to know that there is one for you know before it goes out onto the, the public roadway it's it's covered yeah, so was it, I'm just trying to remember, I thought on the other plans that we've already looked at, it was identified as a PIB, not a permanent wetland marker. Yeah, if it was, I apologize, I didn't think that was the case, but I don't have that in front of me, but regardless, um, we're, we're happy to, to make the change and issue that on a, a final plan for the record if all other. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, That'd be good, Mr. Cusett, because that uh, permanent wetland marker, that would have jumped out at me previously, and I don't recall that. But anyways, okay, let me open it up for comments from the commission members. Okay, through the chair. Yes, go ahead, Ted. Mr. Cusick, I feel like, and I say this respectfully and friendly, I feel like we go through this next step on every property. Um, I'm looking at the right-hand side and I don't understand why the PIB gets ever closer to the 50-foot buffer line. I don't know why it can't follow along the 100-foot buffer line. Um, I think that that's a predictable comment. It's the kind of comment I make on every one of these. And usually you say, yes, that makes sense and we can move that. Um, I don't know why we have to go through that step. Yeah. But, <laughs> It, 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 it's not a purposeful uh, dance. We try to put them where we think they, they, they make some sense. Um, you, you'll notice the road is curving upward um, and the lot next door is following that in the, in the same direction, which is really why, why we, we do that. Um, you know, that house next door is further back and that way you just have one that kind of flows from really from one to the next, you've got a drainage um, swale through there um so i think that that's really what's what's driving that so i i can't see the house next door right now i i don't know if and i don't know if that too much matters what i know is that looks like a lot of extra side yard which is again yard that you said is not all that valuable and extending side yard when you've told us on previous lots there's not much value to side yard that's why we need to have backyard. It seems unnecessary to me. So the, the grading kind of follows where we, we just put it at the edge of the grading and we need that grading to flow with the with the lots that are that are that are there. Um, you know, again, the road do, does curve up and these all of these houses are placed at the front setback. Mm -hmm. um, with the majority of the houses, I think lot one is not, but other than that, they're all right at that front setback. So if the road curves up, the house will, will move up next door and as such the associated yard with it. So it really just flows in with the yard um, next to it. Yeah, so I, I guess I would have to 
wait until we look at the next yard so I can assess both of them. Through the chair, in general, I agree with Ted's comments that you know we're going to ask this, so it'd be nice if we didn't have to go through it at uh, every lot. Uh, I agree, it should be moved up. Through the chair? Through the chair. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Don, go ahead, and then we'll take Ed's comment. No, I'll defer to Ed. Go, go ahead, Ed. I'm just wondering if we can see the lot next door at this point. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if that one has been. Yeah, I'll, I'll just echo Mr. Cusick, Janine, and Ted's comment. I mean, do we really have to barter back and forth on every single one of these lots? I think you kind of get what our expectation is going to be. I mean, can we just skip that step and, you know, kind of work with us. I mean, I, I think you know where we're going on these and, you know, what the expectation of the commission is. So, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner, yeah. I, I would agree with that. And the, the lot you're, you're looking at it next door, that, that shows kind of what it what it is, which is why we why we did that. Um, so so they're, they are submitted. You, you, you do have them together. Um, but that is why uh, we did it that way. If it pleases the commission, we can move the, the barrier up on lot 22. And, and again, I think we've been very forthcoming and we've pulled these things with back. We really are trying to work with everybody. And I think we've been like yep. that. No, I, I agree. So. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, yeah. you know, I, I completely agree with you. You have been forthcoming and you've worked with us. <laughs> I think the, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, can we just, you know, maybe, um, you know, skip the step of. Trust me, that's what I'm trying to do. But believe okay. me. Okay. Um, so, through the, through the chair. Yes, Don. Go ahead. I just want to make the one point um, where uh, Mr. Kuch has noted. You know, he's got the proposed grading. Hence, he needs the, you know, the limit of work, the erosion control, and then he placed the PIBs along there. I think what we previously talked about you can still do all this grading and consider it temporary. I think what the commission has concerns with is it becoming permanent lawn where, yeah, do your grading and then don't turn it into a lawn, you know, uh, right. let it re let it go wild. And so you might have a, an erosion control here, but then you might have a PIB in a different spot. And then that area between those two would go wild. You'd have your lawn on this side of the PIB and, the area that used to be cleared and disturbed will over time become revert wild. back to you know right its natural state right so yeah. i think that so, was one of the points i think the commission was trying to get across to the uh to the consultant through the yeah, chair and, 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 and we're, we're 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 trying believe me um if it pleases the commission we can move that last pib down you know in line um with with the one to the left just so it's consistent and you know it'll, it'll jog once you hit the next lot um, but on this particular um, lot we can we can slide that slide that over and kind of get rid of that triangular piece um, and I think that's what you're asking for we can we can certainly do that I think so uh, go ahead Ted uh, yeah I like fixing this lot having gotten a quick glance at the next lot I think that it can then smoothly retreat in the next lot it doesn't even have to start where the next lot uh, starts. It looks like it could kind of smoothly move towards the backyard because again, that's still side yard, which is not valuable. Yeah, we can, we can, when we get to the next lot, we can move that one PIB down as, as well to have it, to have it match there. You know, again, we, we put them where we thought they made sense. It was still at least 60, you know, 60 feet from the smallest point on, on that, which I think is a pretty substantial buffer. Um, but we hear you. If that, that's what you'd like, we're happy to happy to do it. We're we're here to work with you. Through the Great. chair, we may just want to open up legally all the you know because kind of bringing in this file, this plan, we haven't legally opened the hearing. You know what I mean? So we might want to just read them all, just so you guys can go back and forth if you need to. Yeah. Well, why don't I do that, Don? Um, so Hobby and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing. Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in order of intent. Notice of intent filed by Toll Brothers to construct a single family house with associated site work. Um, 
the locations of lot 23, R23, 127, 0, lot 25, R23, 129, 0, lot 28, R23, 133, 0, lot 29, R23, 134, 0. So that opens up all five of the uh, lots that we're discussing tonight. Great. Okay. All right, oh. let's move on to lot 23. So actually before, just so, so real quick, if we simply move that one, one PIB down and change the um, nomenclature of the PIB, I believe that addresses all of the, the comments on that lot. And I, I just say that in, since we, you know, we have a lot of these ahead of us, if those are the only comments would be amenable to a condition and give you a final plan showing that to frankly save the commission time. Yep, does that, uh, Ted, Janine, does that uh, satisfy your concern? Yeah. I think it does. I, I would like to see that that PIB is kind of hovering the same distance from the 100. If that's the, um, the guarantee I'm getting, then yes, that yep. works for me. Yep, we would absolutely keep it right in line with the other, so it's a consistent, um, a consistent angle um, right, right across. Right along the 100-foot buffer line at the right side. I mean, the same distance from as the second to last PIB on the property. Yeah, so, yeah, so it essentially be, it'd be consistent with that line, that's correct. It so would, we're the we, were in person, we could actually draw lines on the map with our fingers. It's harder <laughs> to do that now. I know, I know. So where the 434 um, elevation notation is there along the property line, that's approximately where the PIB would be? That, that's correct. Would okay. cross that exactly right there, probably in a, in a couple of feet, but yes. Okay. All right, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot 23 um, with the uh, um, caveat discussed and subject to a revised plan being submitted to the commission. Uh, through the chair, did you mean lot 22? That was the first one. Lot, lot 22, yeah. I'm sorry, Don, correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good catch, thank you. This is okay. I'll make the motion. All right, and a second, please. Ted. Ted, all right, we'll do, do the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Terry? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Aye. Jim? <laughs> and Jeff is an aye. Okay. All right, let's move on to lot 23. I don't know what happened to Jim. Okay, lot 23 should be very familiar as we just uh, just discussed it. Um, so similar with all the others, the house is right on the 60 foot setback line and uh, pulled back away from the, the, the wetlands to the rear. Uh, we have approximately 6,000 um, square feet of work within the 50 to the 100 as you, as you can see. Um, and we're essentially cutting in that back, so we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a slope that we be showing that back uh, that back corner. Uh, we've tried to hold that 50, um, or excuse me, that, that that 40 foot yard there, which is where we put those barriers at the edge of the grading. Um, we've also added a trench drain. You can see along the back um, the backyard. Again, this came up at one of the earlier hearings where we had a little bit of a cut. The concern was, you know, the soils on site are, are, are pretty, um, you know, pretty, pretty marginal just to avoid having um, water just sit there and get a little bit soggy. Uh, we took that to heart on this lot as well. So we have a trench drain, which, which is a detail provided on the, on the set, similar to what you've seen before, which will hopefully just infiltrate some of the water that flows from the top of the sheet to the bottom of the sheet, what doesn't infiltrate. Uh, will then continue to flow around the house in the normal uh, drainage pattern uh, that it does that it does today. Um, you know, essentially the, the the wetlands on the top of the sheet flow to the wetlands on the bottom of the sheet. Um, that's really it in a nutshell. Hearing comments from the last um, application. I would propose to pull the PIB down along the property line to match um, what we had. So it'd be right around the, the 434 
comment, uh, contour rather, excuse me. And then essentially kind of go in line right back to the, to the one that's, um, to the one that's shown. So we angle that down just a, a little bit. So if you essentially follow that 434 contour, I think that's what you were asking to, to kind of blend that in to match the previous lot. Yep, I, I think that sounds reasonable. Let me open it up to the commission members. Hi Jeff, it's me again through the chair. Yes, go ahead, Ted. Uh, I like very much using that 434 roughly uh, as the new uh, uh, PIB. It does look like this one is giving more than 40 feet of backyard space though. And I'm not, it looks like it's 50 feet on this one. And I would love to see that return to the 40 feet that we've been giving on the other properties. I will confirm that, that measurement and I'll pull it back. The, the grading is kind of established by the, um, you know, by the, by the slope and the swale coming around there. However, to your, to your earlier point, um, you know, the PIB can be moved in from the limit of grading and just let it return naturally. So we're okay with doing, uh, with doing that if that so pleases the, uh, the commission. It does please me. It seems the 40 feet is the compromise we've allowed. That incursion into the 100 foot buffer by about 40 feet seems to be what we're working with. And I think this one's a little bigger. So if you could pull it back from the 50, 10 feet, that would be great. For the chair? Yes, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, so that was that exact point that I, I had tried to preempt you having to ask that question uh, with my comment because um, it looked like it was about 47 feet, not 40 feet. Um, and then my other comment that perhaps, John, you can address was a little bit of a concern that with, with the French drain and the proposed contours, it, it seems to me that you're potentially directing the water away from the wetland and, and into an, I mean, it's obviously all gonna end up in a wetland somewhere, but um, can you maybe talk about why the grading couldn't occur to allow the water to go more to where it appears as though it's going now toward the wetland? Um, yeah, so, so essentially, Everything from from that wetland will, will will flow out a little bit, and that wetland ultimately further down will flow to the wetland on the other side. So it's, so the wetlands on the top of the hill are kind of flowing back the you know the other way. If we were going to connect things back to 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 the wetland area, because right now we're we're kind of cutting um, a little bit there, you know we'd have to we'd have to go into maybe a little bit further into that, into that wetland um, or into the buffer. But, you know, that's really why we kind of did it that way to bring it around the, really around the, the house. Um, Cause as you go down to the, the previous lot, it starts flowing back the, back the other way. Yeah, I, I guess it just looked like, I don't know, to me it looked like potentially the, the grading could almost be simplified just to push the water, you know, to allow the water. You know, because again, the, the, con, the 434 and 432 contours, you know, seem to be draining back towards that wetland at the, at the top of the page. I know it's, I, it's a little difficult to read on the screen here, but um, that's why, you know, it just seemed to me rather than creating this whole swale, you know, and maybe, maybe the, the house sits higher on the lot or something to minimize the grading and allow the water to go where it currently does. But again, I don't know if that's a concern of the commission or not, just throwing it out there as a comment. So, okay. Um. So it's directed, so it gets into this uh, French drain that's directed off to the left and the right right now, Mr. Cusick. Yeah, it's kind of, um, there's a, a little bit of a, of a drainage divide. Um, yeah. You, you'll see just to the top of that, that actually flows towards the wetland um, to, the, to the bottom flows in the other direction, right? So, so you'll notice the, um, the little bit just to the, 
to the top of the of that French drain into the left property line, you know, you can see that the, the way the contour shifts, that, that area does flow towards the wetland. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah, everything to the top of that, you can kind of see it flows kind of in, in that direction a little bit. Mm -hmm. I but see what Matt's saying. There's a lot of extra piping there on the, on the side to yeah, get I mean, it to the you... front of the house versus just kicking it out to the wetland. Through the chair, may I ask a question for clarification? For sure, reading? Ahead, Tim. Are those squiggly arrows indicating flow of water? along the French drain and then beyond? That's correct. So it looks like all of the water eventually goes out the front and not to the wetlands in the back. No, this, if you look to the back of, of that, that's just along the swale that we're kind of creating. Um, but right. if you look- I'm, I'm following, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm following Don's cursor. That's exactly what I'm seeing. That arrow goes to that one, which keeps going to the front. That is correct. So from, from what drains from the house down to that, we'll, we'll really drain in that, in that direction. If you keep going up screens, I'll call it plan north, you know, the contours are flowing at that point. They then flow towards the, to, to the wetlands. Um, so is it possible to... We, we, can, we can reconfigure. Oh. Yep, I, I, can, I can reconfigure that if you want me to change that portion to the other the other direction that I, I think that's something i'm just thinking you know to melissa's point <coughs> excuse me does that french drain need to be you know need to extend that far to the left you know what i mean have it um you know truncated uh i don't know what the scale is on this but um you know, where this notation is, right? The approximate location of the proposed French drain where that arrow is pointing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right in there. You know, have that kind of the French drain terminate, you know, in that area and then the water flows. I think it's hard to see the contours. Yeah. Yep. You know, I, I, I can direct more that way if it's the... the... The, the the pleasure of the commission that that's certainly I, I think i can make some tweaks there to, to to do that i don't think i can get all of it there but there's certainly no but it can improve the you know in, improve the situation melissa does that make sense to you yeah that that makes sense and do, i forget if we've talked about this or not but do these um houses have some pumps that'll come out to the surface too uh, no, no, I, I no. think they're all, yeah, they're all self-drained out. Self-drained, meaning they have a foundation drain with an outlet somewhere or? It, yeah, if they're, they're, they're high enough where it doesn't, um, where there's not going to be a sump. So that, yeah, we, we don't want these to have some pumps. So they're, they're okay. you'll notice the buildings set, um, set a little bit higher than the grade. Okay. So Matt, are you comfortable with Mr. Cusick submitting a revised plan to you for you to take a look at pending a uh, vote? You know, we'll vote on it pending your approval. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, th I think that's fine. <clears throat> and then the same comments was about the permanent wetland marker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to carry through for all of them. Yep. Um, okay. All right. If I can get a motion to close and approve. Yep, Don, go ahead. Um, we sort of missed it on the last one and we should catch it. We've got no DEP file numbers for any of these toll brothers, the new ones that we're looking at. So obviously the last vote and this one would be subject, you know, we're not going to issue an order until we get a DEP file number. Right, right. We can't. Okay. We yep. can't issue the order. Yeah. Yep. So just so the applicant understands that. No, we, we, we understand and appreciate that. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. If I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot 23. Um, pending a revised plan to be provided um, and for Matt's review. Ed, so moved. And a second, please. Second. And we'll do the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Terry? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. 
Okay. So we'll move on to lot 25. Right, lot 25 it's at the end of the cul-de-sac on the opposite side of, um, of Whalen. So similar to, to the others, houses moved to the front of the site. Uh, it's a walkout to limit the amount of, um, amount of disturbance uh, that we have. Uh, we're currently showing about 50, um, 5,700 square feet of disturbance within the 50 uh, to the to the 100. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, 5,500 square feet, you said? Uh, 5,700. 5,700. Okay. Yeah, 5,740 to be exact. Um, and let's see. So again, we try to Hold everything back. We're not going over the 50. We've added a wall at the edge of the um, at the edge of the garage. Um, and one of the the comments again, keeping consistent with with what we're hearing. I think one of the comments was, you know, even though there needs to be some grading um, on the on the side, could we not, you know, potentially hold the the essentially the the, the PIB? Imagine if you had the wall um, where it is and just extend it to the cul-de-sac and extend it back down in the other direction um, hold that as the limit of of disturbance or excuse me not disturbance the limit of um of uh, the pibs so it would grow in naturally on that side uh which was i believe how i interpreted matt's comment which we don't have an issue with with, with doing that i think that that makes sense and is consistent about what we're with what we're talking about tonight um and that's okay. So can you in a we, nutshell? Can we just go back to the plan, please, Don? So the wall being the linear, um, yep. right there. Okay. So that's yeah. where the new PIB will be. Yeah, we just it's a little bit of an oversight, I guess. We're like just showing it on the other 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 side of the, the wall and the grading, but the, the wall would act as a natural uh, PIB. So so that'll um, just extend out both to the top and bottom, and yeah. that you're suggesting would be the PIB, yep. the new PIB? Yeah, I think that would address um, the line of comments we're, we're hearing. Okay, we'll open up to the commission members for comment. Through the chair, I just wanna say thank you. That saves us some time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, like I said, we're, we're, we are trying to, trying to work with you and yeah, that one I think probably would have made sense if I did that uh, earlier. Um, so you're, you're, you are welcome and we're happy to do it. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or Chair? questions? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, my other comment on this one, John, was a question about uh, the tree line that's shown on the plan. And if this area was previously cleared for some reason. Yeah, this, I think this area. Yep, it, it, it was. This area, I think, was, was cleared. It was originally supposed to be a basin uh, under the earlier um, applications so that area i believe has been has been cleared to the limits um shown as the as the previously cleared limits that's that dashed line we're we're proposing to kind of pull that back and, and let that kind of grow in a little bit um you know once the i think the redesign happens and things changed in that regard but that is that is correct a lot of this is okay. an area so i guess my my started. question to the commission would be is do you want <clears throat> something more than just let it grow back for restoration of, of that buffer zone area that was cleared and now is going to be kind of left to, to its own devices to a certain degree or if you want some trees or something in there. Can we just go back to the site plan, please, Don? Um, so I'm sorry, Matt, what area are we referring to? towards the cul-de-sac? No, so down, I think it's at the bottom of the sheet, that dashed line. Okay. There's ex uh, yeah, that, John, that's the line, right? That dashed line at the bottom is the limit of clearing? Yes, Matt, that, that's correct. Yeah, so there's a, you know, there's close to 50 feet between the proposed PIB 
and where it's existing already cleared. So that, that yeah. certainly is ripe for lawn creep in the future for sure. Yep. Yep. And I think we would want to have some um, plantings put in there uh, to reestablish that area for sure. Um, does that make sense? I'd agree with that, mm -hmm. Melissa. And I would agree with that. Oh, I'd insist on. Yeah, so I think, uh, Mr. Cusick, can you work with Matt on coming up with a uh, plan to reestablish vegetation um, beneficial for habitat into that area? Yes. Okay, and then that wall will be extended to the straight to the top and to the bottom, right? That's, That's correct. Current. Okay. Okay. Does that sound good to everyone? Just a quick question, if I could, Jeff. Is the wall extended or will there be some other PIB and you just need the retaining wall? Or will it be the whole retaining wall? So they, they think the intent was the wall would stay as it's currently shown in its size and configuration. However, the PIBs that we showed outside of the wall would essentially, would, would move them in, would essentially start them at the end of the wall, you know, move up to the cul-de-sac and then move down to the other so that the area from the wall uh, towards the wetland uh, would become essentially natural, you know, would re return. Right. I, I guess my question is, are we literally extending a wall or are you gonna leave the wall where Don is pointing and have some sort of split rail fence or something as your PIB? Going yeah, no, I think that's what I was- Going further back. No, yeah, the, the, the wall is, is intended to stay as it's, as it's shown. We're not, I don't think the intent was to make the wall longer. Right. We would, we would essentially make sure that the, the, the limit of mowing, you know, we'll call it, the, the limit of, of you know, yard would stop there. Right. I, as long as there's a PIB that extends it, I would prefer it not be more wall. I would prefer it to be posts or something. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, exactly. Would move would move the PIBs right to the end of the, of the wall on either side, you know, extend right. up towards the cul-de-sac right. and extend down towards the, um, right. you know, the back. That's great. Okay. Uh, questions, comments? Any additional questions, comments from commission members? Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot 25. Actually, this is this is 28, Don, right? No, I, I thought you were 25. It's 25. That's 25, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, I can't really see it. For, for the chair? Yes, Ed. We Don't we want to put some additions on there with the... Uh, Provisos that we've stated. I'm sorry. Well, for instance, we've discussed the area between the original tree line and the um, BIB is to to go back to Nashville and the things to be planted there. It doesn't yeah, that need to yeah. Be in the so motion? it's so we're making the motion um, subject to our comments and the revision of a of, re, of a revised plan by the applicant. I'll second that. Okay, and did, did we, we have a motion? I'm I, sorry, I, did we have a first? I did. Okay, thanks, nice, Janine. All right, we'll do the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. All right, moving along. Okay, lot 28. Uh, this again is on the, um, the westerly side of, of, of Whalen. Um, this one here, we have the building up along the front as per, per all the others. Uh, everything drains from the front to, to back. We have approximately 
2320, 2320 square foot of disturbance between the 50 and the 100. Um, it's a very, very minimal disturbance. And as currently shown, uh, there's about an 80 foot uh, buffer between the limit of disturbance and the closest um, portion of work behind the house. So uh, really with, with that, that's, that's all I got. Okay, I'll open up to comments from the commission members. Through the chair, I guess I'll start. Okay, go ahead, Ted. This pattern. I'm looking at the PIB to the left of the house. And I'm seeing a place where uh, it kind of points towards the house. Wait a minute, am I looking at the right plan? I may be, I'm on my iPad too. Let me back out, Jeff. Let me make sure I've, I've got the right plan. I think I'm looking at two different things. I apologize. So we're on, we're on lot 28 right now. I think I opened 29 on my iPad. So <laughs> go to somebody else, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we'll we we'll be lot. ready for you in the next one. <laughs> um, okay. Any, Ed, Janine? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. All right. I think this one's pretty straightforward. If I get a motion to, and we need to make the notation on the plan, obviously the housekeeping uh, notation that Matt had referenced, and it's subject to the receipt of the DEP file number. Motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot 28, please. So moved. And a second. I will happily second now that I've gotten a look at it. Okay, and we'll do the roll call. Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. So lot 29. Okay, lot 29. Again, we're on the, the western side of Wayland. It's right at the beginning of the project. First house on the right as you, as you enter. Um, very similar to all of the others. House right at the setback to minimize how far back we, uh, we go. Uh, again, it's a it's a walkout to try to work with the with the grades of the property, and you really try to limit the amount of uh, yard that we're proposing. The comment uh, that that came up uh, in Matt's note, I think, was really relative to the the north or the left of the of the site. And again, I apologize. This one we had. Um, 5,945 uh, square feet of disturbance within the, the 50 to 100. Um, so that's what we're at in the buffer. And Matt's comment had to do with, I think the, the grading on the, on the left, and I'll let him correct me if I'm misspeaking. Uh, essentially, we've, we put the, really the, the PIBs at the, really the, the bottom of the slope. You see, we, we kind of start a slope right at the, the side of the, of the house and then start heading down just to minimize the amount of um, uh, area that we're, that we're working with. So we come down at a, at a slope and then right where it matches that existing essentially is where we're holding the, um, where we proposed those, those PIBs. Um, essentially being consistent with the comments that we're, we're hearing. I think what I would suggest to do is if the PIBs essentially followed, um, what contour is it? It's about the 412 contour. Um, so if we started right at that, the property line, you can see that one, that one PIB right, um, right about halfway down the house. Um, yeah, right there. If we essentially from there followed the the 412 contour, you know, straight up towards the street, um, you know, and move move that um, the PIBs in, I think that would, you know, keep going in that direction until we hit the, the street. Really, um, I think that's what we're we're hearing. You know, that would put it 
you know, probably about 60 feet or so away from the, the, um, the wetland in that area. So again, the degrading is minimized as it is, but we were just pulled, uh, pull that up so that bottom of the slope would, would be maintained um, in a natural, uh, natural state. Okay, I'll open up to comments from the commission. Now I'm ready, Jeff, through the chair. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, great. Um, yeah, John, that's exactly what I'm looking at, but I have a slightly different proposal and maybe Don can help me out. There's a PIB marker that's labeled in or right next to the INV out, that one. I see a line that carries that to the 414 contour and then up to the street. So if you just go straight to the street from that INV, Don, go up until you hit the 414 contour. That's your bingo. And then follow that line. I like that a little better. It's a little bit tighter, but that's that not very valuable side yard. Uh, we can certainly do that. I okay. prefer that one. We can we can certainly do that. Through the chair? Yes, Don, go ahead. If I could ask um, Mr. Cusick to, as he's revising his plans, can he also give us revised um, buffer zone disturbance? Because I assume we're going to see some reductions. You will, and we can. Okay, you, can, you know, it's to differentiate. I know you're gonna have total, but then it's temp. So, you know, if you could just sort of indicate, you know, that this won't be total, there's gonna be some temporary that will be lessened. That makes okay. sense, John? Uh, actually, no, I, I, I lost you. So you wanna differentiate between total and, and, um, and temporary? Yeah, because right here, you know, you, you're pointing out that you're disturbing this amount, but now you've 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 bringing in your PIBs. So in essence, the commission's not going to look at that as permanent disturbance. That's only temporary, you know. Where um, if you could just make make a note um, <laughs> that because right now this was all permanent, you know, and now you you're making a differentiation. So it'd be nice if you could just differentiate just how much you've taken off, you know. Um, from I, I, I can I can do that. I guess my question is how you'd like me to show that. Do you want me to just put a note right under that and just yeah yeah exactly you know. yeah you know it, it would just say in you know regards to the uh, uh, movement of our PIB you know we're only gonna you know we're gonna have X amount of temporary disturbance you know so put a put a put a notation under that table in uh, yeah. section two Don is that what you're suggesting yeah like right in here you know like a lot of times it. And on other projects where where it might have been pre-existing disturbance, you know, sometimes we'd have them break it out to say, all right, this this area is undisturbed. This you know half of it's you know already disturbed and half of it's wild, and we're gonna you know then we would make note of of the differentiation. So it'd just be nice here to sh show, yeah, we're gonna disturb five nine four five, but then. When all is said and is done, you know it's it's a, it's only going to be five thousand because we're going to restore nine hundred and forty five of it back. I I see what you're saying. We can we can do Chair? that. Yes, go ahead, Matt. I'm just wondering um, if it would be more efficient. And John, feel free to disagree if you don't think it would be more efficient okay. to just have one table that lists all the lots basically has this information of the table not necessarily on this form yeah but breaks it all out so that you can just so that if in the future we need to look at this it's all in one place rather than having to dig through god knows how many files to pull this out separately right and then you can just put one different. copy of that whole table in each in each one of these folders if you want that'd be nice yeah i think that's a good suggestion matt thank you does that make sense, Mr. Cusick? Um, so I think it is, so the ask is rather than, than do it in the individual file that, that has it per lot to have a master sheet for the entire subdivision? Just, just the lots that you've, you know, how many you've submitted? What do you got, 20? 
Yeah, give or take somewhere in that range. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, just the but, ones that are before the commission on an individual single-family house lot basis. So it's all consolidated. Yeah. I, so so it's it's this one sheet that has 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 all of it in kind of one one sheet. Right, and then you give me one sheet, and then I would take a copy of that and put it in twenty files. So everyone, you know, so it's all there. The, the only issue with that is it's going to get like every time you look at something, it's going to it's going to change. So so what might be in the earlier files is going to end up being different than the later. You're going to be constantly putting it in the in the files, if you know what I mean, because what you submit will show one thing. We'll get some comments. We'll address them. You know, they get reduced. Then you got the next five that you look at. There's just going to be a lot of paperwork going back and forth with that. I think it might be a little difficult for you know, for you guys, I, we could potentially. Yeah, yeah, like, are you, yeah. Are you saying like we're cl we're closing five now, but yeah. we still got fifteen open? Yeah, maybe, I hear what you're saying. Maybe what makes makes some sense, and I don't have an issue doing it, is you know we can add it to these, and then once we get to the end, we can compile one at the end for you that gives you all yeah. of them. But if I start doing that now before they're done, right. I I yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to create more work for you, you know. Yeah. So. But yeah, you can keep a tab running like, okay, I got, I get the numbers for these five. And then when I go to do my final compilation, you know, that'd be easier for you. You'd have to do it once instead of numerous times. Yeah. Once, yeah, once we have them all closed out, then right. you can submit to us one form or one table that has the yeah. total disturbance and then what was restored. That, I think yeah, that makes no, that's happy to, happy to do that. So, so now I'll continue to give you the sheets. So you yeah. have for the file and then at the end i'll give you a tabulation of everything that'd be great yeah that makes sense we can do that okay okay um and then uh so we'll uh, have a revised plan submitted to the commission same house keeping comments that we discussed previously uh, if I can get a motion to uh, close and approve the notice of intent as discussed for lot 29. So, move. so Ted and a second. Second. All right, Janine, and we'll do the roll call. Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Jeff is an I. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. So we'll uh, talk to you in a few more minutes, Mr. Cusick. Sounds good. We'll be here. Thank you. All right. Jeff? Yes, Ted. I need to take a quick break. The dog needs a walk desperately. I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay, great. No problem. Thank you. All right, so the mass laborers training were continued out until June 8th. And I apologize, I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting, in case anyone has been waiting to hear those uh, applications. Babin, 50 Lake Shore, has been continued out to June 8th, which brings us to Abbott Realty Trust, 25 parcels on Adam Street, Fitch Ave, and Myrtle Avenue. This is a continuation of a notice of intent. Mr. Truax, are you with us? Or a representative of the applicant? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it's Adam Costa. I'm here on the applicant's behalf and uh, Mr. Truax is with me as well. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening, how are you? Good, thank you. So I'll, right. I'll start off briefly if I could, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a continuation of the notice of intent filing. Um, this is my first appearance before the commission, uh, although you've seen some correspondence correspondence from me, I submitted a letter, uh, in fact, two letters seeking back-to-back uh, -back continuances. Um, my understanding in, in consultation with the applicant and with Mr. Truax is that uh, when these proceedings got underway before your commission, there was a discussion concerning some earlier components of uh, the subdivision and some concerns that were raised by uh, nearby residents, neighbors uh, to, the, uh, to the proposal that's now before you concerning the, the general vicinity of the site and some, some water, some drainage issues that have been experienced in recent months and years by those, uh, those neighbors. And 
I guess uh, the neighbors had concerns, some members of your commission had concerns. And so it was suggested that we uh, do some due diligence of our own, uh, engage in a dialogue with the neighbors to the extent feasible. Uh, and that was really the, the, the source of us seeking these back-to-back -back continuances um, a few months ago. And then again, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, because we were in the process of engaging in that dialogue. And then uh, more recently, making revisions to the plan, submitting the plans to you, and then awaiting some feedback from, uh, from your peer review consultant. So we think we've made some, some progress uh, since we were last before you, since uh, Mr. Truax was last before you. Um, you know, we, we appreciate these concerns. You know, they're, they're somewhat uh, unique uh, or unusual in this context because the concerns that were raised, as I understand them, as they were explained to me by Mr. Truax, are uh, you know somewhat beyond really the scope of what what we've submitted to you. We've submitted a notice of intent for this particular portion of the the completion of the subdivision, so to speak. Um, but we do recognize that there's an issue with drainage in the vicinity of the site, and you know we're certainly willing to do whatever we can do to try and uh, to try and rectify it, to try and improve upon existing conditions, and to try and satisfy the neighbors. So. There was a, an on-site meeting and I wasn't in attendance. So when Mr. Truax presents the plan to you, he can certainly uh, give you more particulars, but there was an on-site meeting uh, with Mr. Truax present and with a number of the neighbors present. Uh, and at that meeting, they had an opportunity to walk, uh, not just the, the project site, but the, the backyards of some of these previously developed subdivision lots um, and to discuss with the neighbors their drainage concerns, what they've been experiencing uh, recently and uh, that gave Mr. Truax an opportunity to, to sort of put his expertise to work and consider how a, how a, a mitigation package might be devised uh, to address their concerns. And he had one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of the neighbors. And as I alluded to, uh, sort of went back to his office and uh, went back to the drawing board and tried to devise uh, a, a design that could attempt to um, rectify the problem a, a, as much as, as feasible. So. Um, what we've done is we've submitted the revised plans to you. Um, I'm going to give Mr. Truax the floor so he can present them to you. He can explain what's been ch changed on the plan since the last submittal that was made to you several months ago. Um, I did see earlier today, and I uh, certainly appreciated receiving it uh, before the meeting, but can't say that we're necessarily prepared to address every last aspect of it. But we did see a letter received from Beta, uh, Beta Group um, midday today, maybe, maybe 1 or 2 o'clock. Uh, that had some various comments uh, that were were uh, a response to some previous back and forth that had occurred. There it is right there, the May 24th letter. Um, so we have had an opportunity to review it, but again, you know, haven't had our hands on it for very long. And so um, I'll, I'll defer to, to, to Rob to the extent that he's comfortable addressing any of those those issues. But to the extent that there are outstanding issues, you know, we, we would need to address those at a future meeting. But we're certainly hopeful to make some uh, some meaningful progress tonight, given that it's been a number of months since we were last before you, and we've uh, really spent some time, had a number of meetings ourselves and with neighbors to try and uh, to try and proceed with this project. So, with that, and with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it over to to Rob Truax to present the plan that you now see on your screen. Great, thank you, Mr. Costa, for that background. And thank you, Hi, Mr. Chairman, Rob Truax of GLM Engineering Consultants. Good evening, Mr. Truax. How are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. So since that last meeting, as Adam said, we um, we sent out letters to the neighbors who were about the project and we had a site meeting out there on a Saturday. Spent a couple hours, if not longer, with them, walked through their backyards with a few of them, um, went over a lot of different issues. And obviously I think the main issue was is the runoff and the drainage that comes into these folks' yards and the water issues that they have throughout the area. So with that, we, um, we decided, we told them we'd try and make some, some changes to the plan to provide some mitigation for that, for their problems, and see if we couldn't maybe not cure it, but at least not make it worse, or maybe in some, some aspects, make it a little better. So just to go through some of the major changes that we made was I did update the drainage calculations to conform with your rainfall data by multiplying the... Uh, the rainfall events. So we are using a higher number than the rainfall events, you know, the eight point something inches for the hundred year storm. So I did go, we did revise all the calculations to go to adhere to that. Um, 
the other thing we did do is um, as a result of that, we went through and we're still making modifications to the existing drainage basin. One of the modifications that we explained before was we're putting in four bays in the basin so that the water, when it comes in, it's not just running directly through the basin without any pre-treatment. So we are, we are going to construct four bays within the basement. We're, create, uh, we're creating an access way to get down into the basin so that will stay as for future maintenance. And in the calculations, you'll see that we also changed the outlet structures for these two big basins. And what we did was we did like a staged outlet where you have a structure like a box type manhole with some various outflows with a weir on the top and a smaller pipe on the bottom. So we're mitigating the smaller storms, holding them back longer and letting the, old, the larger storms overflow the structure and then go out into the drainage system as is proposed. Um, right now, what we have, and I think we've We've all experienced this, we've talked about it, as the water goes into these basins, not a lot of treatment, heads right to the discharge pipe and then heads out and goes down through the, the drainage system down downstream. So the thing that we've done to try and accommodate some of the issues behind the homes is we're gonna run a, uh, a trench drain, which is approximately 40 inches deep. It's gonna be exposed on the surface. It's, uh, I believe I wanna say it's about 30 inches wide. So there's crushed stone with a six inch pipe in it. And then these, there's riprap on the top for about the last 12 inches. That pipe runs from the existing Adam Street intersection. As you see where Adam Street was proposed, even though we're not building Adam Street. There's an existing culvert stub that comes into Adam Street right there from the old Blueberry Lane subdivision. So we're gonna to connect to that stub and we're gonna run that up and that will gravity from the uh, lot line, I think it's lot 43 and 44. And that will run behind through lot 42, which we're not constructing and down along the neighbor on Blueberry and discharge into the drainage system in Blueberry Lane. And then from that same point, which is between lot 43 and 44, we're gonna run the pipe in the opposite direction and connect it into the proposed drainage system in Fitch Ave, which goes down behind the, the houses, which is, you know, 26, 27, 29. And we're also going to put two more, if you scroll over, Don, towards Fitch Ave intersection, if you can scroll over. We're also going to run one up along the home of 31 Blueberry Lane, which is uh, Elizabeth, I can't say the last name, but Elizabeth. William and Elizabeth's home. Yeah, we're gonna run the same type of drain. We're gonna bring it about 10 feet off their property line. That's on shown on what's shown as lot six on the plan. And that will connect into the drainage system in Fitch Ave as well. And if you go to the other end of the site, down where Myrtle Ave intersection is, we're gonna run one up along the uh, homeowner of 11 Blueberry, which is Mr. Sellers. We did propose to put one behind 15 and 13 Blueberry. We walked those neighbors' property and this it's not shown on this plan, but we thought the disturbance in the woods would be, would be unnecessary. We decided we would work with those two folks and I've drawn a plan which I have not shown them yet in which we would run a drain across their backyard at the tree line basically and connect it into the street drains, same type of drain. Um, it's not on this plan because it's on private property. It's not part of this project. It would be something we would agree to do upon approval of the project. And if it goes forward, then we would agree to put those drains in for those folks. And that would be a private agreement with those folks and really not part of the overall. I just don't want anyone to think we did not consider doing anything for those last two homes that are about the project. And we only did it for everyone else. So that's just, just so you all know. So I think that's pretty much an overview. Um, I did see Beta's comments today. I would, you know, I, I I don't agree with them all 100%, but I'm sure I can have a talk with Phil and we can resolve most of them. The uh, the trench drain will intercept surface runoff as it comes down across the site. That's all included in the calculations and the sizing of the drainage basin because it's all getting picked up one way or the other. It was all part of the runoff area. So that's all getting collected. So the idea was to leave that drain open at the surface. So if anything is coming down the slopes, these folks 
backyards, it gets intercepted before it gets there and gets picked up for the drainage system. Otherwise, it travels through their yard and gets into the drainage system in Blueberry Lane. Um, it's going to the same system. There's no change in where it's going. It's just how it's getting there. Um, so I think that's pretty much an overview of the changes. Uh, I, I, like I did, like I said, we did update the calculations to adhere to the regulations under your bylaw. So that was done. So there are changes to the drainage basins. We still have stormwater treatment. We're putting in the, um, I can't remember if they're CDS or storm septic units before the water goes out to Blueberry Lane. So we are doing those treatment units. Those are still in still on the plans and we are in, including the four bays as well within the basins as additional treatment. Okay. So I think that's it. Um, be happy to answer any questions anyone has, if we can. So the drainage calculations that were submitted include all of these kind of ancillary, uh, you know, drainage systems that you're putting in around the homes. It's gonna be yeah. collecting it. So that's all inclusive. Yeah, the, the whole area was part of the overall runoff coming to the drainage basins. Okay. Uh, thank you for, uh, you know, meeting with the neighbors and, and addressing these issues, by the way. We appreciate that. Um, so the detention basins that are overgrown, what's going to, you know, what, what's the status of those and what's, what's the plan there? Oh, that's a good question. We, we're going to clean them up as much as possible. We, we're not planning to completely cut everything within them. Um, I was going to clean up, create an access ramp to get in them. I got to create an access road. There should be one so the town can maintain it. We're going to clear the area where the four bay would go. We'll clear an access way down to the outlet and we're going to clear, you know, around the outlet. I think we should clear the embankments on both of them. Um, the bigger one, which is, I guess, to the north, which is more towards Fitch Ave, um, I'd probably leave the vegetation in the bottom just for treatment purposes. The other one is uh, a little different and it's narrower and it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to have, no water actually sits up in the far end of that basin. The water comes in and the outlet is at this like 20 feet from the inlet. So the water just comes in and goes right out and it hasn't really developed any type of vegetation that actually helps it in the back area. So they should be maintained. They're supposed to be mowed. They should be cut down. The banking should be you know, stabilized with grass, not trees so that they have access. And I think once we clean them up and get them to that point that the town, you know, the town would be maintaining them in the future, that that would give them the opportunity to now, to now continue that maintenance on a regular basis. Okay, so has that been worked out with the town that the town will assume maintenance responsibilities for those? They they basins? already have maintenance responsibilities for those. So they're on property. The, the bigger ones, this one's within an easement. The other one's on is within an easement, but on the property that's owned by the applicant. For the develop uh, the owners of the property, it's on the, they own the property it's under, or it's within an easement to the town. When the town accepted Blueberry Lane, they accept the responsibility to maintain the basins. So we would we would definitely coordinate with DPW to do the work, and then you know ideally they'll they'll maintain them on a regular basis going forward, like they should be. I mean, it hasn't been done, and as you know, you've probably, I don't know if you've been out there, but I know Dawn's been out there with myself and Phil Faraday's. We've walked through these basins, and you know, they're not maintained. They're just mm -hmm. overgrown, and they need to be maintained properly to provide proper treatment. Um, right. So that those pictures you're looking at right now, go ahead and scroll back up, Dawn. So that's the uh, inlet. And it's about, I think it's a 36 or a 42 inch pipe. And then scroll down a little bit. And then that's the outlet. And that's only about 25, 30 feet from one to the other. That's the smaller basin. So it comes in the corner and goes right out the other corner. If it's a large storm, it'll back up and the basin will flood. But in the smaller storms, you, it's just going right out. 
So that structure will get removed. We're gonna put in a box, square four by four structure with the smaller pipe at the bottom and then a weir up on the top with a grate on top for the larger storms. So more, more, more in compliant with what we designed today for a detention basin. Um, we don't usually see a basin of this size with just a pipe in and a pipe out. Usually it's a staged outlet so we can control the smaller storms and then control the larger storms as well. Okay. Um, okay. Matt, did you have, uh, did you want to go through your comments uh, that you had on this, please? So I didn't submit any comments on the most recent plan revisions. Um, right, I think your latest were February 3rd, right? Yeah, so I had submitted a, a second comment letter. Yeah, that one there. I think Mr. Truax indicated by email earlier that they will be responding to a few of the open issues in that comment letter. Correct. Uh, I will just make one quick comment. I, I spoke to Phil Paradis a little bit as he was preparing his comment letter. I won't, I won't speak for him. I'll just kind of summarize some of the discussion that we had that sort of somewhat both occurred to us with the revised design. Um, and again, I don't know if, if this needs to be a great discussion tonight about it or not, but I think the concern was with these um, sort of this interceptor drains that are being proposed around the existing homes that are designed to collect overland flow. Um, most of the previous discussions and describing certainly in the wetland areas was that there really wasn't much in the way of overland flow and that the wetland itself um, was really supported by high groundwater and they provided you know, depth to groundwater calculations. And I think the concern, potential concern is, is if these trench drains are really gonna act to intercept groundwater more than they are going to collect surface water, obviously in a storm event, it's gonna be some surface water always that, you know, flows to a certain degree, but are they gonna act more to intercept groundwater? And would that interception of groundwater be a larger volume than the basins have current capacity to handle. So I think that was, I think that was one of the main comments uh, in the beta letter. Um, mm -hmm. So just, just kind of want to put that first and foremost. Um, and I don't know if Melissa or Carrie want to speak to that or have concerns similar to that, but I just thought I'd throw that on the table. Okay, great. Thank you, Matt. All right, yeah, let me open it up to the other commission members um, at this point for questions and comments. Um, Jeff, this is Melissa. Yep, go ahead, Melissa. Um, yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. I know that I think it said in the report that groundwater was five to seven inches below the surface is where the high groundwater was found. Um, and I know that the neighbors were um, talking about how their basements get a lot of water in them and they're, they have some pumps and are going to be, you know, have had to deal with that and, and drainage in, for their basements. Um, I was wondering if these new homes also are going to be proposed with basements and some pumps and are going to kind of be set up for the same problem. And if those, some pumps are going to be pumping to the surface and kind of contributing to the neighbors as well in the, in the groundwater, um, you know, level lowering with the wetland right there. I guess basically, are, are the new homes gonna have basements with some pumps and encounter a similar issue to what the current ho homes have? If I may, Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Truax. So so in and around the wetland area there, as you can see, there's several lots that we're not proposing any houses on that will be built on and we're not building Adam Street. So that was, that was in, yeah, that, that, that's really just to protect the wetland. Um, several of these houses that we'll build will most likely have walkout basements, especially the ones that uh, on the downhill side towards Blueberry and some of the ones along Myrtle, they will be raised up to some extent. 
So we, we, are, we are cautious of the groundwaters in the area. The, the water in the wetland area was, you know, six inches to eight inches below surface. Groundwaters in other areas any range anywhere from 12 to 30 inches below surface, depending where you dig. So we, we, are, we are aware of that. We are gonna design in accordance with what we need to do to make sure that these houses don't experience the same problems that the folks down below experience. So ideally, like the ones with walkouts, so most likely the cell floor would be a grade. So it wouldn't be in the water table. The others will keep them up as high as we can. Um, we'll put them, we're, not, we're obviously not gonna bury a foundation seven, eight feet in the ground up there because all we're gonna do is create a, create a swimming pool. So yeah, we don't wanna see the same mistakes made on these new homes that have already seemed to have happened on the homes that are existing there now. So yes, you're correct. Um, and just I guess a follow-up question, the, the, the proposed drain, so that's going to go through the woods. Are there going to be a bunch of, are we like clearing a yes. five foot, like what's that going to look like? It's going to need to be more than five feet. We'll probably have, we're hoping, we were talking between 10 and 15 feet. We'd have to clear to build that because you have to walk a machine in there. I mean, we, we talked about, you know, the machine doesn't need to, you know, one, contract that we talked to said he has to get around the machine and i don't think that's necessary to build it i think you can start at the top and you can just push and pull your way through you know they, they have those buckets so they fill them with stone and they just drag them along the ground they don't need to drive a truck up and around them every time they can they can get the machine up in there so it's just a trench we cut the trees put the silt barrier in trench it out and the idea is when they trench it, we want to take the spoils and put them on the downhill side. So it creates like a little bit of a berm. So when, if water does come down the slope and it hits the drain, it, it's going to go in the drain and not spill across it necessarily and, you know, just run right over it. So that, that's the, that's the uh, detail that we show and how we're going to handle that. But yeah, I, you got to clear something. I mean, you can't, you can't do it in a five foot clearing. You're gonna to need to clear between 10 and 15 feet. So you can see in the detail there, we show a little berm on the downhill side. So that, that's already been provided the beta? Yeah, they have this, he yeah. saw this. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the idea of that was, so if the water comes down, let's say it just, for some reason it's moving quickly or something, it just shoots right across the stone. That'll slow it down, stop it and It'll get in the stone, just just as a safeguard. And will it still get in there once, um, you know, all the leaves and stuff fall on it? It'll need for to a couple be, of years, and I, th I think what we could do is it, it needs to be maintained. I mean, you got to take the leaves off it. Obviously, it'll it, yeah. I mean, if debris sits on it every year and it's just it's like anything, it'll just it'll, over time it will build up the matter, you know. A compost matter and it won't drain as well but i think it's important that someone clean it every every year and clean the leaves off it if i lived next door to that drain i would clean it all the time <laughs> I, I guess it's the i guess it's the homeowners that are it's on the property of the homeowners that are not being serviced by the drain right correct so is i guess so we, we how would that work we, we can have something in the homeowners in our maintenance program that requires them to keep the drain clear. It's not going to be maintained by the town. Yeah, this definitely drain, not. They wouldn't accept, I don't think they would accept this drain and take the responsibility to maintain it and keep it clean. But we can put something in the individual lot owners that the drain crosses over to have them take care of the drain and keep it clear. And the crushed stone is just to get it to the pipe, basically. It's not intended really to infiltrate because it's uh because of the soils and the Yeah, it's it's not gonna infiltrate water unless you know, unless it's August and everything's dried out and we get a rainstorm. But um generally speaking, the soils up there are you know, poor infiltration. We've done perk tests to try and do septic systems. They were they were failing. We had failed perks, they couldn't put septics, that's why we went back to the town and got the sewer to go through the area. And 
So it's really not, it's not an infiltration trench. It's not gonna infiltrate water, especially so, especially not during the spring. Yeah, is the, is the invert of the pipe above uh, groundwater? The, in, the invert's down, what, 24? It's down 36 inches to the top of the pipe. Groundwater range is anywhere. It's gonna be in the groundwater right now, the way it's shown. We can raise it up if you didn't want it in the ground, groundwater. I think I think it, that would help alleviate the concern of wetlands and groundwater um, dewatering if that's not the intention to get rid of the groundwater for the neighbors. We could raise the we could raise it up. I mean, they'd ideally like me to get rid of all the groundwater. Till <laughs> <laughs> the till the private wells dry up. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, we could raise that up. Right now, I'm showing the top of the pipe at 36 inches. I can pull that up to 24 inches. And if that would make the commission members feel a little better about the, the drain going around that area. I think it well, would. Okay. Yeah, it, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards too, but you know, I'll defer to Melissa Carey and Beta on that. Um, Okay. All right. Well, that was a good overview. Um, I think, you know, Beta submitted the letter dated May 24th. So you guys need to take a look at that. You need to take a look at Lucas's comments. Um, I think this still needs to be a discussion with the town on whether the town's going to assume responsibility for maintaining the. Uh, the basins. Um, so we have a little bit more work to do. You know, I just I want to make sure that this is um, looked at with a careful eye because you know the existing homeowners that live out there have had you know significant problems with groundwater and stormwater issues and basements flooding and yards flooding. And, um, you know, we're proposing to come in and put more um, lots in. So, you know, I just want to make sure that this is uh, uh, designed, you know, properly. We're not going to have continuing issues once the developer walks away from the, uh, um, from the subdivision when it's done, you know, leaving it in the hands of the homeowners in the town. So, okay. So, uh, our next meeting is June 8th. Is it okay to continue out to the 8th? Does that give us two weeks? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. If, if you can just send. Sorry, can, I, can I ask a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if there are any members of the public who have a question, absolutely. Um, go ahead, Ms. Um, Farrell. So I'm Melissa Farrell. I live at number 31, and I've only lived here for two years, but from talking to a lot of the neighbors, the drain um, system that is being proposed. A lot of homeowners have put in something identical around their own properties and have found it to be ineffective because the six inch pipe will clog with clay or debris. Um, and it's just, it hasn't been sufficient. So I know several of the people on the street have spent like 20 to $30,000 putting in totally different drain systems. So I guess my question is how, is this drain system proposal different than the ones that they originally put in with the neighborhood? Because those have been quite ineffective. And is this one, is this the same one or is this different or better? Go ahead, Mr. Truax, you can respond sure. to that. Yep, no, I will. I, I don't know what the homeowners put in for a drain type system. Um, we put these drains in in the past and they work quite well. This one, we, you know, we put the stone in, we dig the trench, we, we line the trench with a fabric. It's a filter fabric so that the silt can't get into the trench. And that, and if you look at the detail, it not only goes around the side, but it goes over the top of the crushed stone that the pipe's encased in. So it overlaps at the top so that the silt can't come down from the top as well. So like, I, I know what you're saying that, you know, they, maybe they didn't have that, maybe the silt came through the sides, you know, fines get into the pipe over time and clogged it up. So we're, we're, we're putting in safeguards so that doesn't happen. Um, this is a very typical setup that 
towns require for drains along roadways as well, you know, under drains along the side of the road, other than the riprap on the top. Okay. Yeah, I think the the feedback was that the fabric lice um, was short, so that's probably why it got clogged and drained or clogged and then didn't work. But do you know what the fabric, the lifespan on the fabric on this one that's being proposed? I don't know off the, off the I don't know off the top of my head, but I will I can find that out. Yeah, I think I think just to, you know it's great that you guys are putting it in, and we really appreciate you meeting with us. I just think that um, what was done before was ineffective, and we're not certain that this is going to be effective. And um, you know, I'm on the corner of Fitch Ave, and we're always flooded out. You know, we're, we're thinking we might have structural issues now with our basement and all the cracks in our foundation. So. Um, just knowing that there's going to be so much more going in unless, you know, more water for us. I just want to make sure that our property is protected and not washed away. Agreed. Through the chair. That makes sense. Yep. Go ahead, Don. Um, I was just wondering if Mr. Truas could maybe put some language on the detail regarding the uh, filter fabric. I don't think it's really, you know, called out. Sure. Great. Okay, do we have any other comments, questions from the public? Thank you, Mrs. Fair. I don't see any hands raised. If you do, you can speak up now. Okay, um, so Mr. Truax, if you can just submit a request for continuation to June 8th to Don by email. And uh, Kimberly, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so June 8th, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Okay. All right, uh, Morrow, 88 Franklin Road. This is a continuation of a notice of intent for a garage addition. Yep, we're here. Good evening, Mr. Morrow. Good evening. Uh, so you wanna give us an update on where we stand? Yeah, so basically um, uh, we went back, uh, took the Conservation Commission's comments and asked, uh, worked with Dave Marquinot to basically just redesign, reposition uh, the existing addition. Um, really the takeaways from the prior plan, um, you know, one is we will give back the uh, currently disturbed uh, area of the corral, mm -hmm. um, which is in excess of what we're essentially um, you know, using uh, for the barn addition. Um, we also reposition the barn addition further away from the 50 foot barrier and more of it outside of the 100 foot barrier um, as well uh, to ultimately so that, you know, really the proposal is a net environmental benefit positive. Um, we also, you know, with this, Repositioning, we also didn't take, uh, we actually slightly shortened up the disturbance area, um, which uh, Dave Marquinot highlighted in uh, with the red versus the black dot uh, with the permanent barrier. Okay. Okay, so let me open it up to comments from the commission members. I have a question, Jeff. Yes, go ahead, Ted. Uh, it looks like um, I, I do see how the proposed addition has been shifted. So now that, that wall all lines up. It looks like it goes deeper into the tree area is making that change going to require more tree cutting than was originally planned? Um, Dawn, could you, this is Dave Marquardt from JD Marquardt. Um, Dawn, the, there you go. 
could could you blow up to the bottom of the proposed addition? Uh, the uh, Ted, the original uh, line was shown in red, limited disturbance, and the black uh, is the current limit. So uh, our tree disturbance is uh, right at that 1,400 uh, square feet. And then we're uh, replanting uh, over by the corral of 2000. So we did a, a small modification on the south side uh, and moved up uh, to the north, the limit of clearing to the black line. Okay, so, so just to be clear, do we have a net gain of trees as a result of this? Yes, by 600 square feet. Okay, of, of trees, not just land left well, again. The, 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 when it's established, the replanting of the corral area would be uh, 2,000 square feet, so we'd be netting 600. And, and the replanting is trees? Yes, down on the lower left-hand corner. Uh, Sean hasn't decided quite yet what he's going to do, uh, but that's the hatched area is... Uh, Ah, I see. Reestablish. Okay, thank you. Through the chair? Yep, go ahead, Don. Maybe given the proximity to the house, you know, maybe they wouldn't want to plant huge trees that are going to become canopies, you know, like white pines, you know, maybe something understory, maybe dogwoods or shrubs, something that, you know, um, won't become so problematic down the road. Exactly. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. That's a good suggestion, Don. Okay. And I, I, I agree with that. That would be great. Um, eventually, the, those trees, trees do grow big enough that we've run into issues before with, you know, um, mold and moss, uh, you know, getting on the building and the roofs. Yep. Okay. Uh, other comments, questions from commission members? Comments, questions from the public? Um, this, this is Ginny. I just have a, a comment that I still, I guess I still struggle a little bit with such a large building in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. Um, so that, that's, I just wanted to make that comment. Okay. Thank you, Janine. Through the chair? Chair. Yes, Don, go ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll defer to Matt. Matt? Um, yeah, I, my only comment was with the uh, plantings. Uh, I know it's probably typical special condition, but a uh, condition for monitoring of those um, plantings once they're in. And it looked like potentially the PIB maybe would need to be extended a little bit more to really enclose that area of planting to show that that's, you know, to be permanently protected. Yep, does that make sense, Mr. Mark or not, Mr. Mark? Yes, it does, yep. We'll make that adjustment, yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and, um, Dave, Don, I was just ahead. wondering, Dave, would you be able to just, I, I'm not, not sure if you revised um, these numbers. Yeah. Sub, yep. subject I'll revise, you. I'll update those, yep. That'd be great, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent as discussed, subject to the submittal of a revised plan uh, discussing the extension of the PIBs um, and then the revised uh, impact areas on the um, NOI form mm -hmm. that uh, Mr. Marconot is going to submit. So moved. And it made the motion. A second, please. A second. All right, that was Aye. Melissa, and we'll do the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Janine? No. Uh, Ted? Aye. Ed? Aye. Jim? Uh, and Jeff is an aye. I think Jim may have dropped off. Um, I don't see him on here anymore. Okay. All right, Mr. Morrow, you're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Take care. Okay, moving along. Toll Brothers, Chamberlain Street, Lot 1. This is a continuation of the Notice of Intent. 
Good evening. For the record, John Cusick with Bowler Engineering. Nice to Good see evening, you again. Mr. Cusick. Okay, so this next um, group of five, we had actually presented um, last hearing, got some initial feedback, uh, made some changes, uh, resubmitted to the commission, and um, received some comments from uh, from Matt. He uh, did not uh, wasn't able to review it prior to the first hearing. Um, he reviewed it for uh, for this hearing. So. With that, first in line is, is lot one. Uh, lot one is the essentially the, the site that is pushed back uh, to the rear of the property. Um, when the lots were reconfigured and the lots were reduced, um, we essentially accessed this lot um, to the, the upland area to the rear of the, of, of the site. So some of the comments that we heard uh, at the last meeting had to do with doing something a little bit more substantial along the um, the driveway to ensure that um, snow wasn't getting pushed out there, or just it was it was just more more substantial of a um, of a, of a PIB. Uh, so based on that, you'll note we've got essentially um, the PIB shown twenty um, twenty feet on center in that area. And we have a note calling them out um, as boulders or or stone bounds, so they're they're a little um, a little more meaty than um, what could could be. So that we added that uh, there, essentially five feet off the off of the the driveway line, just to really block that area up. Um, Additionally, we carried some of the PIBs over on the back of the of the house, even though that's the, the wetlands off the property. We just really wanted to define where the um, the open space line was, so we carried some in that area as well um, towards the rear. So we've added that to provide any any uh, creep into that area, even though it's outside of the the one hundred. Um, and the last comment you wanted us to, to look at is to see if there was the really the ability to to combine the driveway with the abutting lot 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 two. Um, we took a closer look at that, and it, it really doesn't doesn't make sense based on how these are are, are configured. And and by that I mean lot one. You know, the only place to, to really site the house is at the rear of the of, of the site. You know, it's over, you know, a couple hundred feet behind where the house on lot two is. Um, so even if a small section of driveway would be combined, it really wouldn't eliminate the the driveway coming up of you know across the you know adjacent to the, the to the fifty foot buffer. Um, there's, there's no way around that it needs to, to be there uh, to access the, the house. Rather, you know, it, and because of that, we really kind of took your, your comments to heart on the, on the buffering to prevent any creep along the driveway. And as I mentioned, we really bumped up the, um, the PIBs uh, there, um, again, with boulders or stone, stone bounds 20 feet on center to make that very clear that that's a, a no-fly zone. Um, okay. With with that, I can answer any comments you you may have. Don, can you just please enlarge that plan? Um, okay. Twenty feet. Okay. And then um, scroll up, please. There we go, okay. Okay, all right, I'll open it up to comments from the commission members. Chair? Yes, Matt, go ahead. So my other comment uh, that was submitted was just a question on a little bit more detail about the, there's a culvert, <clears throat> it appears, uh, that goes underneath the driveway that didn't seem to have a lot of detail to it as far as an actual detail on the plan or inverts or anything like that. Um, I don't know if 
John, if you want to speak to that. Yeah, I certainly can. Sorry for leaving that out, Matt. Um, so essentially the, the wetland um, or the way the site drains, again, this, this wetland over here, uh, well over here, you can't see my cursor, but right where it says lot one, it, it drains down and continues to the, to the, right, um, the right of the sheet. You know, we contemplated whether just to have that flow go over the driveway or, or just to try to actually contain it so you don't have a, an icing condition, which would then lead somebody to add, you know, excessive salt or something like that. So we thought it would be better to actually provide a pipe underneath the, um, underneath the driveway. Um, we can certainly, uh, we can certainly just add some additional um, detailing to that with some, some inverts and whatnot. And I'll probably, the other comment Matt had was he asked if we could put some, um, some some stabilization protection on the on the outlet side of the of the pipe if the water is going to channel through there just to make sure it's not a lot of water but just to make sure that there's not an issue in the in the future so that that's something that we we think is a good comment and would would add that you know i'd also probably better define the you know the the, the contour at the outlet side once it comes through as well so we'll we'll add some some spot shots just to show the uh to show what's there. I think the intent is clear, but we'll add a little bit more detail in and we'd add some stone at the outlet side to prevent any um, potential erosion in the in the future. Yeah, those are good comments. Thank you. Agree. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Uh, comments, questions from other members? Sure, I'll go again, Jeff, through the chair. Yep. Go ahead, Ted. Uh, Mr. Cusick, by my counting the stones, is that about a 350 foot driveway? Um, I do not, I do not know. Um, I, I was actually counting within the 50 to 100 buffer, but that's roughly what I get. And if, if my math is right, just counting stones 20 feet apart, I think that's roughly what it is. And I guess my comment on that is that's just very difficult for me to accept that much pavement that close to the wetlands within the buffer. And I'm aware that this lot, the way you guys have drawn it up, makes it really difficult to get to the back end. But there are other ways to draw up the lots, I suppose. My other comment is, though, um, if we do allow that type of driveway that close to the wetlands, I feel like there are other places where you can pull the PIB closer to the house and still maintain yard. I'm looking where uh, right in front of the house, where the, the PIB stones kind of hug the 50 foot buffer. John, there we go. I feel like there is a place you could pull it further from the buffer and still have plenty of backyard. And then again, to the right where the PIB looks like it's 60 feet maybe from the wetlands that that could be pulled closer to the house and you still have plenty of backyard. Um, so those are my two thoughts. I don't love the driveway period, but if we do allow that much incursion of impervious surface, I feel like you can give back even more other places. To, to that comment, I mean, I think we, going back a little bit in, in, in history, I, th I think when we had the, 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 32 lots, we consolidated it to, to, to reduce the three lots and there was much more um, impact with, with that. This lot, there really, once you, once you do that, there's really no other way to access the lot, but we did take you know, great care to make sure we stayed outside of the 50 and kind of followed the, you know, the, the regs in that regard. Um, it's just unfortunate. That's the only way to access the lot without having more wetland impact, which, which we didn't want to to, to do obviously. Um, th that said, to your to your other comment, um, you know we certainly can pull on the um, I'll call it on the, the right side of the of the of the house as you're you know standing at the wetland looking at the at the house. I think we can pull in that the, the PIB similar to some of the conversations we had before. We you know we need the clearance where it is, um, but we can pull that in. You know probably holding call it the four, 442 contour, or excuse me, 482 contour, is that what that is? Uh, 482 contour maybe, and kind of bring that back down in a line and just hold that. Um, 
think that's consistent with what we were talking before. And if I'm reading the contour wrong, it's hard to see it. Um, yeah, I was going to go actually one closer to the to the house in a straight line. 480. Uh, 480. 42. Yeah, if you if you essentially the line parallel to the to the house, just continue it straight up to where it hits that other PIB. You know that would have a decent amount of that side yard. Um, you know remained in the, in the natural state. Um, I think that would be consistent with some of the requests that um, that you previously had there and, and would make some sense. We could, we could do that. Okay, that's definitely uh, an improvement. And if I could, Jeff, what about the yep. other side of the house where, where the PIB leaves the driveway and hugs the 50? Can we get that a little closer to the house as well? So, so that we might be able to squeeze it in a little bit. That that gets kind of pinched around the corner, um, but it, it might be able to pull that maybe in five feet or so at the at that corner there. Um, we can we can do that. Um, I wouldn't want to go too much closer because it is getting close to that front of the house there. Okay. So I can't see what contour. It uh yeah it doesn't really follow a, a contour per, per se but it's the the contour if you see the head wall um it, uh if you go to the to the other side I, I, I think i think you're talking on the front yeah there you go see the, the contour that goes right from the head wall yeah yeah kind of following following that a little bit um so the the one con one contour in from where the pib is currently located yes saying? yeah Yep, exactly. Just kind of going right to the right to the head wall. Okay. Okay. Comments, questions from other commission members. Through the chair, this is Ed. Yes, Ed. My friend, my friend Ted beat me on the draw here. I had my finger on the bar get my voice in here. Um, I, I just find this lot very unsupportable and, and I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that for the moment. Okay. Okay, uh, questions, comments from the public? Uh, no hands raised. Don, did you have a comment? Um, I, I, just, I, I just wanted to sort of point out, I, I don't know if it's been a discussion point in the previous if you get a PIB up through here, you know, you're getting some mitigation that is outside the buffer zone. Um, I don't know if that was a point that was raised. And I just wanted to uh, go back to uh, Mr. Cusick's uh, discussion about the, about the driveway. And uh, I thought the, the commission, he, he made a point, it was the last meeting and I, I don't know if I understood it at, at this meeting with the reevaluation. We know the, the driveway can't change in this area, but the, the lower area, if you had, because the commission was looking for uh, a, a choice of a, a joint driveway in this area, um, which would alleviate some of the disturbance, obviously not down in here, but I think the commission was looking to see if some of this could get moved over here. And I, I guess if you could just reiterate re re why the driveway you know, we know it has to stay here, but why can't it get further away and have it a, a joint driveway down here? If he could just ex explain why that can't happen, that would be great. Um, sh sure. So <laughs> I, I could slide the driveway over a, a little bit, you know, a little bit further on the, on the property line at the bottom, you know, that, that pulls it over a little bit and, you know, getting closer to that, the property line that, that, that we can do. Um, and then that would create a little bit more more room in that area. And then Don, to your, to your other point, that is exactly what we try to do in other areas. We, we try to limit areas that are outside of the 100 foot buffer, you know, it's fully outside of the jurisdiction to essentially put it back in the jurisdiction, just to commit to not, you know, not clearing those areas. Realizing this particular lot, you know, you had, you had some concerns with the driveways. Um, adding one, small section of, of, of driveway to combine it with the with the easements and everything that goes along with it and it doesn't 
really solve the the the, the problem um, that you've or the the issue that you've raised. It doesn't really do much just to have the front portion, short of create a you know potential issue between two neighbors. It's always better to save those and separate those unless it would be a, a, a significant um, difference, which which I don't see that here. I, I think it's better suited to provide you know enhanced buffering elsewhere, which is what we're what we're proposing to do and really beefing up some of the PIBs. So so I think I, I can slide this driveway over um, at the bottom a, a little bit more to keep it on the property line and just you know go five feet off of the off of the property line. Um, you know, that, that I think we can, we can do, but I think to do, to, to combine it for the first, you know, 50, hundred feet, whatever, actually it wouldn't be that much, you know, it might be 75 feet. It, it doesn't, doesn't add a lot of value for what, um, the impact it causes. To the chair. Just, yes, Don. I don't know if I made myself clear. I think the commission was looking for a common driveway, not 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 two in the set. Maybe put one here, and having it access here, and then the you know so you'd have a common driveway here, and then you'd have a split and going. So the split would be in here on this one lot. So in essence, this would go away. We've seen we've seen common driveways in other filings. They're just that's okay. I'm just done. That was just my point. I just needed to understand why you couldn't do a common driveway there. Through the chair. Yes, Ted. I'll just point out that Don's suggestion would save 150 feet of driveway, um, roughly, again, counting stones, if it entered into the 100 foot buffer much later along as the way Don suggested. Okay. Well, Mr. Cusick, you want to take a look at that? We'll continue this out, or do you want to vote? I mean, it's 10 o'clock. We got to kind of move along here. We got um, four yeah, other. I think we'd, we'd probably continue this this one out there. I, I, I think, I really think combining that driveway doesn't doesn't do a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good um, in this area. And I think I feel pretty, pretty strongly that's better to keep them separate. And I, I feel as though we've really given a lot on, on these, on this particular lot where we're pulling things back. And then back from the beginning, we've made those reductions in the, in the lot areas and, and uh, everything else. Okay. So do you want to continue it or do you, would you like us to vote? Uh, let's, let's continue it. Okay. All right. So let's move on to lot two. Okay. Lot two is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, everything is really separate um, and on the opposite side of, of the driveway that would remain, whether it becomes combined or not. Um, it's really pretty, pretty minimal impact there. Um, happy to answer any questions on that. You, 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 you might, you might have. All right. Open it up to the commission members. Can I have a comment? Yep. Go ahead, Carrie. Um, because that driveway is there, I imagine that the property owner probably is going to want some kind of screening in there and they'll probably use vegetation or fencing or something like that. Like if they use vegetation, that maybe um, we should have some condition in there to make sure that they use um, native species and, as opposed to putting in some kind of invasive species all along that property line, or the driveway line. And that will be future landscaping, but if it's in the order of conditions, it will be, um, it will convey with the property, right? Mm -hmm. So along the PIB you're suggesting? No, because the PIB is on the neighboring property. I'm imagining that these guys aren't going to want to like stare at a driveway and they're going to probably plant something there, with the, which will be in the buffer. Yep. Yep. Right in there with Don's. Right. 
You got, well, a PIB. you got a PIB here, but you have a property line here. Right. Right. So if I'm like the future owner, I'm going to plant something right along that property line so that I don't have to stare at my neighbor as they drive up and down that driveway. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. So we can put that in as a condition. Yeah, um, yeah that makes sense. Is that okay with you, Mr. Cusick? Just a condition that th there couldn't be any, there wouldn't be any. Um, Did any... they put screening in along the driveway that, or the property line that it would just have to be, you know, native buffer zone friendly plantings? Uh, yeah, we can, we can add that to the condition. Um, yep. Okay. Okay, any other questions, comments from the commission? Questions, comments from the audience? All right, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot two. The, the, the Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We, we yeah. might wanna just keep that one open in case there's any changes on the other lot that impact this. And if there's not, you know, you've already commented. Yeah, good point, okay. Yep, so we'll continue this one out as well then. Yeah, but at least we've gone through it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, lot three. <clears throat> lot three. Let's see. Lot three we presented last last meeting. Um, we had some changes to the PIBs, so everything is shown. All the PIBs are located outside of the 100 foot buffer, even though the grading that was needed uh, goes in, 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 in one area, but all the PIBs are outside of the 100 foot buffer. Um, this comment you asked for, uh, the other comment you asked for was us to add a note that the proposed drainage swale um, should be directed to stormwater basin number seven on lot four homeowner must maintain uh, drainage pattern. So, so we added that note to the um, to the drawing so it was clear uh, what the intent was. Okay, great. And then, you know, just the same comment that we had on the earlier lots that it be identified as a PIB and not a, um, I forget what the verbiage you used was. Yes. Permanent wetland boundary, I think it was. Or something's yep. that effect absolutely make sure that change is carried through okay comments from the commission and, uh, to the chair, yeah um we have a hundred foot buffer and then we have a pib and they diverge hugely as we get down to the left corner how come so it, as Kind of you're talking about the grading is goes beyond the PIBs. Is that the the question? No, I think Ed's confusing the PIB and the erosion control barrier. Got you. Gotcha. Well, yeah. Just to, to, to you know, these old here. eyes don't see so well, but what I see that I think is the PIB is on the inside of the hundred foot, yes, no, no. They updated it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the PIBs are essentially right along the 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 hundred foot, um, you know, the hundred foot buffer. So again, the intent is everything inside the hundred foot buffer to, towards the wetland will will grow. You know, will will we'll grow back. You know, we won't, um, it won't become a, a, a lawn. Um, and then, but we had to create, just make sure the drainage patterns um, followed the, um, you know, the, the intent to get the stormwater where it needed to, to go to. So we so added- So it re no. revert back to um, natural vegetation. Correct. Ed. Okay. Uh, questions, comments from the public? All right. So I think this one we can vote. Um, so I'm going to motion to close and approve the notice of intent uh, as discussed for lot three. Second. 
So moved. And a second, please. Second. And we'll do the roll call. Melissa. Aye. Gary. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. And Jim dropped off. Okay. Uh, lot five. Okay, lot five. Um, again, pretty straight. Sorry, pretty straightforward. Um, again, everything that we was asked last time we have uh, incorporated, and essentially what the, the the comments really were was about having the um, you know the, the backyard kind of be uh, consistent with the, with the 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 forty feet, which we which we did. Uh, we also, you know, previously had the, you know, the PIB um, kind of going around where that foundation drain is, but, you know, now we just kind of cleared out what was needed for the foundation drain, but we've got a PIB going straight across there. So the intent is, and that's on the, on the left side, sorry, the bottom left side, um, really. So the intent is that that area will, will, will go back. We just needed the, that elevation to get the foundation drain out. Um, and again, pretty pretty straightforward and I think we've addressed everything from the last the last hearing okay questions from the commission through Is the chat there, oops me. somebody else go first no I just just wondering if it for the chair is there a stray PIB on this plan over look where the like on the right hand side it's 456 mark there's like a triangle PIB is that right that um, so I, I think the um no i think the the intent is is to keep it there this is a lot where it's kind of strange in that um the, the detention basin is on a lot next to you um so the the basin needs to you know will, will be you know maintained and and, and kept free of trees growing on the um on the side slopes and, and all that but what we wanted to do was just make make sure that that 40 foot got carried all the way around right to where it hit the um you know essentially where it hit the um the, the setback line um and then we just carry it straight down the same way so we didn't want we didn't want people to you know cheat across um you know across that area and kind of sneak around to the to the back yeah, I get it now. I, yes, I, at first I was thinking it was the intention was for it to curve back, but I see what I see what you. Yeah, doing. we, we kind of did it as, rather than yeah rather than angle it down. We did it as a right hand turn. You know, okay. I think that was I think that was something that I interpreted from the last meeting. That is what folks wanted. Okay, Ted, did you have a comment? Uh, that partly explained my comment. I have a short question. That section that's cleared to the basin, is that gonna be short lawn? Is that gonna be slightly meadowy? I, I realize you need access to the basin. I'm curious what it will look like in its final version. So I, I think the, so the intent is the back lot, the backyard would be, would be a, a lawn. Right. right? And, then, and then beyond that where the basin is. So the, the basin can have, um, you know, longer meadow grass that grows. You just want to make sure you don't have trees growing in it, right? So I think that's exactly. something that would be mowed a couple times a year, maybe. So roughly from Janine's non-stray, stray PIB marker back, that would be meadowish? Yeah, yeah, it'd be a meadow from the, right. um, the, si the side slope of the basin, I guess, is the way to... Right, right where Don is pointing. That's all meadowish. Correct. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. At the basin. Yep. Through the chair. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this dotted line. This is the drainage easement. So he's got to, you know, that that's got to be fairly maintained. So all this area is drainage easement. Then it gets narrow up here, outside the commission's jurisdiction. So in here, that's all drainage easement C correct and that's kind of where where i think it will transition you'll have a probably a maintained lawn and then at that point you know it's something that you know 
like you said, twice a year, they might come by and, you know, and mow the side slopes. That isn't something that the landscapers come in weekly and will do the, the side slopes like they would with a, with a lawn. Great. That makes me really happy to hear that. Awesome. Okay. Um, questions, comments from the public. If I get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for lot five as discussed. I'll make the motion. And a second, please. Second. And the roll call, uh, Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. All right. And lot 15. All right. Last but not least. Lot 15. So last meeting, um, that was one where we had the PIBs along the, the limit of, of um, you know, the, the bottom of the, of the slope. Uh, you had asked us to pull that, um, pull that in. So we, we kept it you know, parallel essentially with the side of the, um, the side of the house, you know, kind of towards the, the toe of the slope and you know, carried that up to, you know, where it hit the, hit the hundred foot buffer. Um, pulled that, pulled that in some. The other thing we clarified, um, there was some discussion about the, about the drainage um, basin that was located uh, along Chamberlain. Um, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that that area uh, was 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 maintained in, in that area, so that way we could make sure that the flowage would would still go into that um, into that grate. Uh, so we added the note as was was discussed: catch basin shall remain clear and unobstructed to allow overland flow, uh, free access. So I think there was some concerns if that would get buried or something along those lines. We wanted to call that out on the plan. Yep, very good. Okay. All right, comments from the commission? Chair? Yes, Matt. Um, I just put a, put a comment in my letter. Um, there's another catch basin sort of behind the house, um, away from the road. And I was just wondering if that needed to be an open grate, I guess it's technically not on this lot, but if that needed to be an open grate catch basin or if that could just be a manhole, uh, just thinking sort of its location um, of potentially things going into that that didn't belong. Yeah, I, I think the, the intent is that certainly a, 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 a graded catch basin. Um, Again, this lot, we've got a decent amount of, of, of cut and you've got the slope that's coming down to it and, and, and things kind of draining in that area. So, so the intent is that it will capture um, anything that doesn't go into the trench um, that's upstream of it. Okay, and you have the same notation on that one? We, we do. We just want to make sure it's very clear that that needs to be maintained and no, shouldn't be buried and, and, and covered up. Yeah, does that make sense, Matt? Yeah, I guess I was just thinking that that trench drain <clears throat> should be catching all the flow and discharging to that structure either way. I, I just, it didn't appear to me that necessarily a, a grade on it was gonna carry all that, you know, collect all that much more drainage, um, but I'll defer to John on that. He's the engineer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a decent amount of flow there. So I thought it was best to capture it. Okay. Dear Chair, where's the, out, where's the outlet for that catch basin? It, it loops back around the, the lot on, on 16 and goes into the drainage system. That's the pipe? Correct. Yeah, that, that particular lot is is outside of the um, outside of the the, the buffer. Um, yeah, so that's outside of our purview. I, I mean, I agree. Yeah, I think yeah. It's so we didn't. First design, and I wouldn't put a catch basin in somebody's yard. But 
that's outside of our purview. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, again, goes back to the, the comment that these are just tough soils here. So we want to make sure we're not having soggy backyards and, and people calling the town complaining and calling developers complaining. And, yeah, so, but it should be a properties yeah. problem and not the town's problem because now it goes on the town's Yeah, side. we just but that to... was approved by something else. So we will stick to the uh, <laughs> thing on the table. Okay. Uh, comments from the public? All right. So I'm going to motion to close and approve and approve the notice of intent for lot 15 as discussed. So moved. And a second, please. Second. And the roll call Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. Ed? Um, and Jeff is an I. Okay. Thank you all. We appreciate it. All right. That. So, uh, Mr. Cusick, if you can just send um, Don and Kimberly an email um, continuing lots. Uh, one and two. Yep. Yeah, one and two out to June 8th. That would be great. You got it. I will send that momentarily. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you all for your time. Have a good evening. Okay. Yep. Yeah, have a good evening. Okay, so I don't think we have any public forum tonight, do we, Don? No. Okay. So another marathon uh, conservation commission meeting tonight. No pun intended. That things got canceled. Or no, I don't know what we would have did if the <laughs> if the mass laborers training didn't get canceled in Babin, we would have been here till midnight. And I was missing when the council aging just kicked us out. And if, yeah. the was, if the commission was wondering, we deferred a couple of those enforcement and fine hearings for Legacy Farms North out to June 8th because when we posted this agenda, we didn't have these cross lines. We Thank just thought it would be insane. Yeah, we're going to have another busy uh, yeah, night. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I kicked that can down the road, but it's already, what, 10, 20 now. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if we... Um, okay. Okay, hopefully it'll slow down. Yeah, know, June and July. Um, okay. All right. All right. If I can get a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ed. I have an email from Anya. I would just like to read it if I may. Okay. The turtle girl. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Mr. Ed. I am thankful for you and your team for getting this done. I really appreciate it. We have seen the sign on other streets. I also read in the article that the signs will be placed seasonally, which is a great idea. Sincerely, Anya. Very good. We actually, um, we got a, a little turtle stuffed animal to give to Anya. So, um, Anna, I'll drop that off at town hall. Um, and then maybe, you know, we can just have Anya go pick it up. Sure. Here's a, I have it right here in case you guys want to see it. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Leonardo is his name. So, um, we, we actually invited Anya to be on the call. So maybe the next meeting she might join us just so we can kind of formally thank her. But um, okay. All right. So uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Hopefully. And a second. 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 And Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Janine. Aye. Uh, Ted. Aye. Ed. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Talk to you later. Good night. Good night. Good night.